Hello everyone and welcome to Procedure Counters, the Dungeons and Dragons campaign brought to you by Prestige Gaming, also known as Live Souls Gaming. Hi, I'm your Dungeon Master Michael and we have an exciting session in store for you tonight. But before we get into all that, we have uh, a few announcements to get through. First and foremost, a lot of the music you'll be hearing tonight is brought to you by Midnight Syndicate. Midnight Syndicate is a music production group creating goth or and fantasy RPG music that you'll be using at your tables at home. For more information, we have a clickable link in our chat right now, but you can also use the command exclamation point midnight to access it uh, in the given point in time in our Twitch chat. You can have, even go to midnightsyndicate.com right now uh, for more information. So that's great. It's a great time. We love it. It's fantastic. They're fantastic. And it's a sp officially spooky season, also known as spooky. peak midnight syndicate season because they make spooky music. That's fantastic. Um, we also have art. Uh, our character portraits were made by Jeremiah, who is our uh, resident artist here in the campaign. He is also Diablo um, in this campaign. So if you want to commission him, go to our Discord at lipsouls.com slash Discord or use the command exclamation point Discord in the Twitch chat to get a clickable link in case you don't like typing. Um, either way, you'll, you'll, you'll end up there. It's fantastic. What other announcements do we have? Uh, I don't think we have much else, honestly. Uh, this is what session four. We're on session four, four or for this campaign, their third campaign. Session five. Session five. Oh, session, 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 session four was wow. the one with the with the musical introduction. Oh, session yeah. four was yeah. Yeah, I forgot yeah. about that. It won a Tony. Yeah. Yeah, it was just from some random guy in the corner of the street named Tony. Yeah, which is um, weird. But yeah, he's like, he, he like gives you a hug and like, you want a Tony? And I'm like, I don't know what that means. It was. It I was, gotta see a doctor. It was just a peppermint patty wrapper, like wrapped around an acorn. Pulling don't a piece take of candy from strangers. That's all. Just don't take candy from strangers. How about we play some D&D? &D? Sure. <laughs> Grab your drinks, grab your snacks as we welcome you to our table and we begin session five of Procedure Counters Campaign 3. And here to tell us what happened last week in his very own words is none other than Cram Goku. Here we go. We stand in a great hall, a place where magical arts and vast knowledge is collected. We speak to a mural Tamlish and he tells us the creature we fought is called a skin changer. A horrible creature that feeds on a tiny part of their victims. This feeding changes the creature into that person for a smaller t amount of time before the feeding is needed again. We also show him the strange amulet we found. A mural, a mural tells us that it is of some infernal origin and he wishes to destroy it. For this we are gifted a powerful item that makes us, the user harder to hit. There are more prizes that he has but for them he wishes for us to travel into the woods of the north and kill a beast lurking there. Before we leave, I think this place might have more knowledge on my kind, so I ask him. And I am told that I am of Zorexian descent, and now it's just a great ruin and nothing more than a wasteland. We wish to battle the Demon Prince of Madness further and stop his corruption, and the best case for this is finding these skin changers. Where else but at a crypt? At this crypt, Renatus starts speaking to the dead, and they beckon him further in. This could be a trap, but what more can we do? We keep traveling further and further into this crypt where we find someone preparing a dead body, but upon closer um, inspection, they just seem off. We are quickly attacked by another skin changer, and it is a bloody battle, but we kill them quickly. <laughs> I'm terrible at these, I'm so sorry. After. After this battle, a god speaks to Renatus, telling him that the city is under threat to these demons and that the corruption runs deep in this place. He asks us to attend the ball, but after the fight, we need to rest. The Prancing's Tabu where we find this for the night. So, uh, you all are currently looking for a tavern as you are in the lower southeastern section of the city of Ilnira, um, which the train for the night ha is no longer operating. You have been told that in, in, in three nights, 
uh, including this one, so technically two, uh, there will be a ball that you have to attend by the guidance of um, Yelna, the, the, the goddess of the afterlife. She's a, the goddesses she's of the a afterlife. goddess. She doesn't know anything. Uh, so I need somebody who feels confidence in their knowledge of the city to make an investigation check as you ask around uh, for what would be a good place to stay the night. I mean, can I jump in as the local the local kid and have Valerie? I'll give you advantage. Around? OK, OK, let's see if this works. This is my first Are role proficient tonight. proficient in investigation? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm tec technically as a bard, I'm like partially proficient in everything. Because <laughs> I get to add my proficiency bonus to a whole bunch of stuff. That... Jack of all trades, man. Uh, it's a 22 if it's invest if it's advantage. So 19 you... if it's not. <laughs> you are recommended a tavern on the third floor of the city uh where it is known as the watering hole unfortunately they did experience some um, poisoning instances a few months ago but their reputation is still pretty good it was quite a place called the watering hole doesn't sound quite as pleasant as uh as a pantsing tabby but uh it sounds a little bit uh up uh, maybe diablos you know and a nice watering hole in the uh in the desert I don't mind. Sounds lovely. Good. Hopefully there's not too many poor people there for you. <laughs> she gets towards the tavern. <laughs> Do not look are, you, that way, are, are you doing that on purpose or? You're th you think I'm messing with you on purpose or not? Uh, uh, I'm not a Chimur, uh mindful woman who is only telling you kind, thoughtful things. No, mis misinterpreting the stuff I said and then messing with me. Like, I, I get the messing part. I'm, I'm, I have a problem with the first part. <laughs> that's, that's how you, 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 you mess with people. You misinterpret what they say, throw it back in their face and see if, what response you get, huh? Listen, I know you don't hate poor people. I mean, look, you're hanging out with us. I did not know you were on the side of poor people, but yes, I do not have something against poor people. I have something against thieves. Oh, well, that's a moral stand you should probably reconsider. But anyways. Walking into the watering hole, it's actually a, like, uh, it's, it looks a little bit nicer than the Prancing Tabby. It is on the third floor. Um, and from here, the... You walk in, there's a nice long rug that leads up to the counter that's uh, this nicely carved wood. It seems to be made from a solid uh, one tree, one piece uh, that was completely carved out. There is a red dragonborn man standing back there who has an eye patch over one of his eyes. Uh, he's wearing a very nice uh, suit with these black and gold accents that complement his scales very well. He does have two horns that kind of push back, uh, very similar to an antelope, just about half the length that you would expect. He looks up at you with his this orangish eye with a, a thin iris. Hello, how can I help you this fine evening? Well, we're uh looking for some rooms to stay in for the night of course the watering hole is always welcome to those fine customers to join our reputable ranks how many rooms will you be needing this fine evening how many y'all think are you okay with sharing the lady does not share rooms you know that diablo I'm talking these fellas. Oh, I mean, that makes it easier. Me and Orna can can definitely share a room. I mean, do you actually sleep? Like, I've never actually no. asked that question. 
not not really. We kind of just go more into like a low power state for a little bit. Can we just like hang all now up on a hook on the wall and he'll be okay? Might break the hook. And it looks like he's shut down a bit, a little bit right now. Anyways, mm. <laughs> I mean, or not as a person, you know, he ought to have his own bed. How about you, uh, Daka? You okay with Sharon? Yeah, why not? All right, how about we do, uh, three rooms? One for the lady here, uh, two for, uh, my friend Cram and my friend, friend Ornar here. Uh, and another room for, uh, Myself, my good friend Daka, and Renatus, so he can uh, stand still in the corner like he usually does. Wait, of wait. Actually, Ren Renatus? To... No, I, I much rather prefer to sit cross legged on the floor and meditate. You're right. Well, we welcome everybody at the watering hall, voyeurist or not. Three rooms for just one evening you'll be staying with us. Wait, do you have special conditions for peeping toms? I am under strict guidance to not answer that sort of question. Three rooms, <laughs> to my understanding, for just one night, or will you need an additional night here? I think, uh, yeah. What? What do you think? business to attend to and in, uh, in the morning so uh, we I believe we'll be moving on after breakfast sounds all right to me how about you all that's good sounds all right three rooms one night how much are we looking at all right so that will be eight silver pieces eight sterling uh, per room for the night. So three rooms, eight sterling, two gold, and four silver. Does that sound like a fair price? Uh, make a wisdom check. Okay. I'm not going to do well. It's a three. A three. Uh, I mean, it's, it's it honestly seems like a really good deal. This place looks comfortable. It is on the third level of the city. Now, would you like meals as well? I assume that's not included in the package. It is not. We do not offer a uh, complimentary breakfast or drink. So, I suppose you're called the watering hole, not uh, Nana's fine bed and breakfast, so... Oh, we get our name the watering hole from our hot springs that are just around the back. You say hot springs. Hot springs, sorry. I did, I did. I assume that's the why closest you were we're here. gonna get to a beach episode, so <laughs> uh it's, it's a lot of that changes things a bit. So how much did you say? It is uh, five sterling a meal. Five sterling a meal. I mean, okay. if it's any help, me and Orna don't eat, so... Okay. I also do not need to eat. There we go. Sorry. Wow. So Great! Meals for I'll three just meals. have your portions! Perfect! Three, three meals, three rooms, and uh, are there any spa services uh, going with the springs, or is it just a kind of soak and... You just... Enjoy the soak. We do offer uh, complimentary towel service, though. Enjoy the fine candies on your pillows. Like you... a melted uh, cocoa product, right? Correct. Okay. We import the finest chocolates from the Caliban Empire. Hmm. 
Dakar, I say we don't let Orna near the springs. It might be like the pond. Yeah, pretty much. Um, hey, buddy, uh, you want to wait in the room? Maybe we can find an anvil for you. Okay. Or I will just nod his head. <laughs> That's as close as I could get to an impersonation. I shouldn't do it, but. Right, so we will get your rooms ready. Feel free to have a seat at the bar. And in so what was the time? three meal, uh, three meals, three rooms, eight sterling per room. So that's 24 plus 15, 39, three gold, 39 three silver. Sterling. All right. Uh, we'll pay that out of party funds then. No one has to take any money out. Look at that. She produces money out of literally nowhere as she reaches into her jacket and pulls it out and it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> all right. So you, uh, you all are escorted into a bar. It's more like a lounge, really. It has these nice armchairs around tables with a, a crackling fireplace in the corner. Uh, there are many people who are kind of like sitting and enjoying their brandy for the evening. And, you know, it's it's comfy. There is a, a bearskin rug and many other trophies from what seems to be adventure uh, traded things hanging on the wall. I stink. Well, this is certainly a little bit of an upgrade for the Pouncing Tabby. I suppose this is actually more not more of a uh, what do you say middle class sort of location or upper class well it certainly got more shit in the walls yes. and not just holes do you think um, they would allow me to brew my poison here i i would avoid calling it poison i mean if my, you want to brew, brew your special uh version of uh ale, you should probably do it in a different location mm. i'll wait until we're out on the road for that then it's just you know you can do that in the room while you're doing whatever you do do you sleep like i don't understand i've never what do you do so you're more than welcome to come watch if you want it's no no that's okay it's highly what? fascinating both of them have a resting phase. Uh, I don't, it's Ona the same as have Marika. a phase. Yes. It's just flame and a mask. His flame dulls slightly. It's um, a wonderful sight. Is it like a rhythmic, like you're breathing? Like it kind of goes like pulses and is it relaxing? Mm -hmm. I've seen it once. He, I, I assume he was dreaming. Does he dream of electric sheep? I presume the Great Forges. Yeah, pretty much. No one gets that reference, I'm sad. The... No, we got the reference, we're just ignoring it. You all are not the only uh, patrons here. There is a group oh. of uh, sign keepers that seem to be off their shift for the evening. And what is everybody's passive perception? Passive person. Is Ornar's count in this or? 11. Uh, Ornar uh, is not. 13. Okay, cool. 12. Yeah. Yeah. So passive perception is 12. Okay. 13. Sorry, it took me a second to, so, to really understand that. Anybody who got over 10 uh, would be hearing this because they're, they're not very quiet or conservative about their conversation, but it appears that the information that the city will be accepting emissaries from the Sangizian Empire in these next few days has already reached the ears of the Sun Keepers. Uh, one of them, a elven man with this long black hair that is just seems to reflect the fire uh light quite well it's like they're really going to let those monsters into this city after all that we've endured another one a woman a human honestly if they are sending emissaries here maybe it might be the opportunity for some peace between nations on opposite ends of this continent 
Cut the undead. Despicable. <clears throat> oh, he looks at Renatus. Um, who hears this? Uh, anybody got a passive perception over 10, which I think is all of you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but you guys all already knew this information from when you're at the mages guild. A few yeah. mages walked by. What is the reason yeah. for the ball? I think only a couple of us heard it back then. So, did you guys hear that? Yes, we did. I did. Some, some emissaries. Do you have problems with necromancy and that stuff? Oh, I got it. <laughs> I, no, no, Daka, I don't have a... Definitely don't have a problem with necromancy or those filthy undead that come over here and kill people, kidnap people. And raise them as uh, thralls. Okay. I'm not sure. Do I get a hint of sarcasm? Oh, oh, okay, okay. Uh, that took me a hot second there. Okay, maybe I should should uh, go more into the definition. Sanginian guys raise undead. They do their own trouble. What I meant is the school of necromancy that has power above uh, life and death and in between yeah. watching nether worlds like, like that. So I, I make a difference between whatever they're doing. You're talking and, about like healing spell, some healing spells and resurrection spells and things like that. Yeah, like that's what I mean. I'm like, there, there's necromancy, and then there's what what they are doing. Well, I guess I should uh, specify, and I'm sure uh, my good pal Renatus could agree with me here. I don't think the dead should be fucked with. And I don't I think don't. people should be captured. Yeah, that's that's a, another type of that. That's more of a kink. But no, that's what was happening to you, Daka. You were you were going to be fodder for the Sangizian Empire. You were going to be an undead of some kind. And uh, your two companions who are now our companions. Well, I don't know what they were going to do with them, right? I would probably say melt us down to bits and pieces. I, I really don't want to think about that. <laughs> that's a little bit of terrifying. Aren't you glad we came? Okay, that's that's a little bit a little bit more of terrifying. Yeah, well if you're gonna be uh running with us, you you ought to start thinking about it. Yes. Don't like bring up any undead thralls in a fight or anything like that. It might not be go over well I mean okay I'll note that one. down if I ever one summon one. things skip the animate dead ones summon like the forest animals and things like that elemental spirits dragons you know is, is that, yeah, a, is that a general thing dragon. Like, do we have something against zombies or more of skeletons or, or like, if I raise a ghost, was that, is that an option? No. Well, technically, a ghost is more a trapped spirit. It's not technically undead. <clears throat> I mean, uh, it's still dead. That's that's an interesting quandary. Is a ghost undead monstrosity or is it just... I mean, to me, it seems a real I'm so fight. sorry to interrupt your conversation, but your rooms are ready. Of course, Thank you very um, much. Which I, we were going to do spa uh, hot springs, or is it too late for that now? You are more than welcome to get changed in your rooms into the robes and uh, convene in the hot springs just through that hallway there. You have like an oil bath for our friends over here? Like. We will take oil. good care of this one. Okay. Um, I'm gonna come out of there like the Tin Man, all polished up. 
and a couple of ladidas. Um, so to cut it short and sweet with you, Deco, I don't really like to get into the nitty gritty, but don't do what them Sanguizians are doing, and you're fine with me. I won't. But enough. Let's go get changed. A boy. <laughs> Valerie's like, poof, grabs her key and she's gone. <laughs> Chrome? Chrome? Mm hmm. Yes, Ducker. Do, do, do we know what the Sanguizian guys are doing? I mean, I barely know of the place I'm in now. How am I? I, I didn't even know about the Sanguizians until about 30 seconds ago. That, we'll just put it on, on the, t like, at least third point of research? It's it's my number two. First, Zorexian. Number two, Sanguizian. Number three, Renatus' weird ghost. Good a point. few moments yep. later, uh, you all are dressed and you're able to enjoy the hot springs, which are outdoors, uh, but they're you're still in a, an underground part of a, a city. So there are like these uh, cracks in the wall where this uh, mineral water is kind of flowing out and there's like calcium buildup from the deposits of the mineral water as it comes out, uh, forming new little uh, uh, trickles. But the, the air water is in a pool that seems to be uh, humanoid made away from the stalactites and stalagmites that from this water, uh, but it is warm. Because as you all know, if there are calcium stalactites and you touch them, you actually ruin them. Uh, so they want to keep those nice and pretty looking. Uh, the water is murky in a way, uh, but it is like this crystal blue with the, 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 the uh, it's almost like someone took crystal blue water and put a bunch of glitter dust in it, pearl dust. But it's the calcium. It's sparkly. It's pleasant. Is there like... Is there a divider for men's and women's section? Or is this like a shared bath? Uh, there is a divider, if you so choose. Okay. Yeah, I think it's appropriate. See you later! You can still I hear over it, though. I can still hear you. Just say, I'm not going to go in the water with the robe on, you know? That's, that's a waste of a good robe. I see any of you looking over, you're dead. I'll catch him if they do. It's too yeah. strong. Don't. We're messing with you, Daka. You, we think better of you. Apparently, you don't. Yeah, it's, yeah. I'm teasing you. Come on. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, we'll, we'll settle in the hot spring. Kind of just lean back, arms up on the edge. There's mysteriously more like uh, fog on Valerie's side every time the camera switches over there for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of anime style. So. Uh, I mean, is there anything else that you guys would like to talk about for this evening, or would you like to move on to the next day? Do we want to talk before do anything before we move on? I mean, I may be behind mean, this uh, screen, but uh, this is just us in the evening. So. I mean, it's not a conversation, but during the actual long rest, Cram wants to start um, alchemying this devil's tongue into a vial of poison. Okay. Uh, through the wall, like yeah, yeah. Um, Valerie, I got a got a question for you. Uh, of course. Uh, what was it? An hour two time ago, uh -huh. you definitely used this guy's elf because I could yes. see the the perfect somatic motions. Of course, yes. Um. But you only changed half the way. Is that is that a very specific thing for you, or did you choose that to like modify the spell? Because that is a cool application. 
It's which I haven't thought about. So it's a, a combination of the magics and the use of uh, some of the talents taught in my, uh, as you say, college of uh, of Baldic magic. <laughs> So it's a style decision. Okay. It's more just a, it's a modification. Is there more spells you modified? No, no. Just a, it just happens to be one I can do at will. At will? Uh, these things happen. I had you, a very can... teacher. She was very kind. You must have studied that thing a bunch. Wow. I don't use it too much. It's a little strange. So, how many faces you got memorized for that thing? You would like me to count? <laughs> what I would assume you got like a like a, a, a proper number of oh I got this prepared and not have to come up on the spot with all the different things like why not? it's a process to have a good disguise yeah, it's about learning what somebody looks like and learning to try to impersonate their movements and uh, uh, their vocal patterns and uh, things like that so yes I suppose I can mimic my teacher quite well Though I won't show you her face, because, well, she's more beautiful than I am, and I don't think you can handle that. I'm not oh. even attracted to you! You're not green! Yeah. I, and... I will say... Sorry. Yeah. Um, to anybody on the on the men's side, they will say, see uh, Diablo take uh, a towel and dip it into the hot water and drape it over his face and then remove his mask from under it and then like massage it in for a little bit before putting the mask back on under the towel you can take it off um don't you try what no. was that oh um, um. You did a switcheroo? What? Your face thing? I don't know what Mask. you're talking about. Is, is that a permanent thing you're having? What do you mean? Okay. Okay. I'll spell it out. We're naked in the bath yeah. and you're still wearing your mask. Now you took it off to wash your face, but then put it right back on. Hey, sometimes you gotta take off your face, clean your face, and put your face back on, you know what I mean? No, my face is pretty much permanent, and I like it that way. I had some accidents while working, and I'm glad they healed without problems, but... Oh, I don't stop. take my face off. I'll stop pulling your leg, Dak. I just clean my face. The mask is going to stay on as long as you can see it. Okay, why? It's part of the gimmick. It's part of me. It's part of Diablo Dorado. Okay, but you, you, you said it's an image. You said it's a gimmick. So, is there a break face? Away Until from the show phase. You got a goal, okay? Now, now we're getting closer to something. That would be. Get away from my next show. I don't want to spoil the surprise. Okay, when's the next show? And it happens. Yep. You know you're you're the real inquisitive type, Daka, but. With a person like me, you just gotta wait and see. You understand? Well, n uh, no. Well, yes, you just told me, but 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 no, no, I, I, 
Come on, if, if, if I don't ask thousands of questions, I don't know how, how the world revolves about shit. You need inquisitive guys like me to explain stuff. Not everything needs explaining, Dekka. Oh. I get you're pulling the leg, but that really offended me. You everything stop. needs... You still, everything you stop pulling each other over there. Everything needs explanation. Grom, come on, everything! I mean, some things are better left to the imagination, though. Because not everything it can be and is good explained. We don't know where the fuck you're from. <laughs> I right, call I'll that a you, problem. I'll give you a little teaser to sate your mind. When the golden light of Diablo Dorado pierces the inky blackness and splits the sky, that's when you'll find out more about me. That is... Poetic, but not specific. That's the point, man. Back at the increase. Okay, so, okay, so more of a prose uh, stuff. Okay, I get it. Really not my topic. And with that, we're well, going to say that you guys are going to head off to bed for the evening. Yeah. As you're starting to get pruny in this water. Unacceptable. I don't prune wood. What is pruny? <laughs> you get flexible if you're in the water too long. <laughs> you start to warp a little bit. Yeah, he's actually <laughs> swollen a bit. The next morning, uh, you are provided a very nice and comfortable breakfast. Uh, courtesy mm -hmm. of the five sterling that you each paid for this meal. Uh, there's there's a lot of breakfast meats and there's fresh eggs. There's all sort of things available to you as well. And since you sat in the hot springs, uh, you do have for the next 24 hours uh, advantage on constitution saving throws. Hey, nice. So we should come back here more often. The next until you finish your next long rest, you uh, well, or until the next dawn, I should say uh, next 24 Oops. hours. You have advantage on your constitution saving throws because then you used to be like, never rest again. So, you know. We're trying so to we should mark ourselves for long rest as well. Okay, wait, wait. We get a long rest. I understood that right. Yes. Yes. Good. I healed one hit point. How exciting. You had to heal? <laughs> Wait, I walked into an electric fence. What do you think happened? Um, you got excited for a second. Yeah. Sounds like you boys were having a good time. What do you mean a good time? You're always asking interesting questions, Doc. He sits weird on the floor and stares into the abyss. I woke up at night because I had to pee. Freaked out for a second. He doesn't even close his eyes. And this guy? Oh my god. He needs two beds. So much rolling. So much, like... Have you seen a fight in laying position? Plus... Some snoring and there was like even one shout with like oh the rock like it's a whole thing. <laughs> you know I'm quite experienced at fighting horizontally. <laughs> you might have had an invisible companion for all you knew. <laughs> Whatever. Next time I'm gonna sleep with Crom and Ornar again. They are way quiet. They let me sleep. <laughs> yeah, you need your beauty rest so you can do all of your magic and ask too many questions. There is no such thing as too many questions. Thank you so much for staying at the watering hole this past evening. I hope you all found our accommodations exactly as expected. I tips them an oral on the way. Of course, you can always come back and visit us anytime you like. 
Of course. It was a very pleasant experience. He'll hand right. you his card. It will say, Ooh. uh, Water and Hole Journal Manager, One-Eyed Bill. One-Eyed Bill. I love him. Yep, see you later. We should really, like, make this establishment, like, is there, how many? It's a big town, there should be a lot of inns. Maybe we should have a list, watering hole, good place. Are you suggesting that we should uh, do uh, a... Wait, okay, we're going to drop everything else. What we're going to do is we're going to go to every restaurant. We're going to every inn, every tavern in the city. And we're going to write a book. Uh, talking about the menu, the accommodations, and we're going to sell that to people so they know where there's the best place to travel in a new year. Wait, from from just right now we're becoming food critics? That's more than a food critic. Food and uh, accommodation. Hey. You know, unless I can uh, strangle a sandwich, I'm not really interested. Mm hmm. Strangle and the does sound like quite a boring life. Yep, yep, yep. I'm with them. Okay. What would you well, like to we do can... with your day? Well, we need to go to the Guild of Mages, don't we? All the way back. Back to yeah. In we are old Tam Leash. All right. So you will need to pay one bit each and one sterling each. No, not Dollar my sterling bit. bits. Y'all are paying out of your own pockets now. As you board the train Choo -choo. to make your way back to the central part and up one level here in the city of Ilnira, um, the train does only run um, on the top floor. What time is the last train? To... Like when does it operate? It goes from sun up to sundown. This morning it is feeling very crisp in the air as it is one, is one of the first truly feeling autumn days uh, here in Ilnira. Um, do we wish to let um, the lady know that we delivered her package package first, or? Okay, I don't wait. know if she'll be back at the tea house, but I suppose we can stop to see uh, Sophia on the way. See if she's there. Just I drop off a note. District. Let the dew drop. Yeah, so uh, when you get to the dew drop uh, tea house, there is Sophia is not there. But the uh, halfling man who is behind the counter this evening offers to take a message if you choose to leave one. Okay. Uh, can she write a message to leave it? If, I mean, if, however you want the message to be delivered, you yeah. can leave a message however, however the hell you want. I don't care. Yeah. We'll just leave it. Leave a little a little card with with some some script on it for her. Okay. Yeah. Do we would like to get some tea before we head to... I know we've had breakfast, but... We're, nah. we're already in a tea shop. Okay. She leaves him a, a bit. And thanks for taking the note. No problem. Oh, sorry, Sterling. It's Sterling, let's not be cheap. All right. <laughs> so... Uh, you head back to the Mages Guild, which, of course, is the area that's protected by the two gargoyles with the portal that leads into a pocket dimension where the Mage Guild technically exists. Uh, upon entering, you notice that there are some priests and priestesses of Yona and Graftrea, uh currently carrying a stretcher out from the Mages Guild. Is it on the structure? The, there is a cloth covering. Do the does the body under the cloth look like it's moving or? It is not. Hmm. And you walk up to the uh, receptionist ghost of the old lady, who's like taking a, a handkerchief that she appears to have died with, and I was like, dotting her eyes as she's uh, giving up fake tears. 
Oh, what happened? It was just awful. It's just awful. Uh, last night, the Archmage Della Sand uh, started experiencing horrible stomach pains and she passed from it. No. We got terribly she... ill and we do not know why. Diablo will slowly turn his head towards Val and just hold there for a moment. It's a, that's quite <laughs> terrible. Uh, there's so many dangerous things in this, this place. I hope she was careful. It really is. A, it's a shame. You never know what's going to happen in these, uh, these days, uncertain times. No, it's very dangerous. And I say magic is not uh, not the thing for even the uh, masters. But, well. Yeah. And she, like, wipes the, like, tear from her eye. We are we are here to see uh, Archmajor Molotem, if, if he's not overcome with grief by losing one of his comrades. Of course, of course, you may go ahead. Okay. Unless anyone says anything else, we move on, I guess. I mean, I'll just look confused between you two. I mean, like, as we're walking, I'll very, very hushly say, "Did, did we poison her? We didn't do anything." I mean, oh. guilty by association, though. Read it from your mind. She's an archmage. She knows to be careful with anything she receives, and who can say what happened, but this is a dangerous sign of work, is it not, Taka? Yeah. I'm more concerned about your behavior. You behavior? didn't know, you didn't really know the way. You got some tears, did you? Like, is she close? No, just an un it's an unfortunate death. It's... Unfortunate. Okay, then why why did you cry crocodile tears? I cried a single tear. Sympathy Decker. Death is death. Hey, come again. Sympathy. Sympathy. I think you mean empathy. That's what he said. It's about whether or not we know the person. She died and her companions are very clearly sad. It's hard not to feel the sad seeing someone shedding tears. Is it not? Is that something you struggle with? Uh, no. No, I don't struggle with it. Oh, you don't struggle with it because you don't do it. Okay. <laughs> the measure of a man. I didn't know the woman. I have no reason to cry any tears. So soon enough, you reach the uh, study of Amold Hamlish, the Archmage of Demonology. I'm walking in, I uh, he greets you. Oh, so you are back. I did not expect you to be here so soon. Yep. Yeah. Apparently we're better than we expected. Yeah, we ain't uh we ain't hit the woods yet. No, um I presume you've heard about the ball. I have, I have an invite myself. Mm, we wish to ask for you to extend that invite to us as your friends, acquaintances. I do not However see you like why that title would be used as I have only known you for the past 24 hours. Very true. However, it would not be unreasonable for me of someone of my status to not have a detail of people responsible for my security. 
Hmm. There's... Oh, how do we... Should we... I, th I believe we should explain our, our ask, should we not? Because if you're willing to put our trust in us... After your trust all, in it us. seems that Archmages are dropping like flies. As it's... a colleague of mine just passed away th this morning from a mysterious sickness. It's very sad. But... He said there are many Darker. there are grim tidings on the air more than just the death of an archmage and there yeah, spoke to us in the crypts and what did she what have did... to say she she warned of great danger to the city and the Zangesian empire Something very important is going to happen at the ball, and she asked that we seek you out so that we could attend the ball. We found and killed one of the creatures in in one of in in her crypts. So dark tidings fall on this city if nothing is done. I see that is something indeed and something is telling me that you are telling the truth. I would never have made up a story of being spoken to by one of the gods because I don't exactly prescribe to any particular faith. But when the god, one of the goddesses of uh, the dying world appears before you, speaking of doom, you listen. There are going to be many people of interest here at the ball this evening. Many archmages, the head of the guilds, the three governors of Yana themselves, and uh, of course the guest of honor for tomorrow evening would be uh, three emissaries from the Sengizian Empire. Do we have any information on who these people are? I do not. They are quite shrouded in mystery. Mm. <clears throat> we don't even have a map of the Earth. Lands either. What's the point of their visit? Well, they're emissaries looking probably to make good business with the country. Yeah, that that's the question. What kind of business? Is it just, hey, we want some local tradings, or we want war, or we got, we're here for two you potions? You understand, we... young little wizard, that I am not a politician. I do not involve myself with the political intrigue of the city, and I'm not all-knowing. Yeah. You know, I'm not either. Uh, what I would guess is that... There hasn't been any conversation yet. The ball's the time they're going to bring it up. The majority of the four nations in this continent are isolated from one another. Mm. Yeah, I do know this. this. Where is this ball happening? It is happening on the city center tomorrow evening. Life. However, I am not in intending any disrespect when I say such things, but you all are not appropriately dressed for such an occasion. May you do not look like you have the means to get proper clothing for this in such a short time. And what do you suggest? I, I will. I will say. This ain't going nowhere. Just your skewed face. The mask is part of him. There are six of you now. I will give you each 15 gold to go and acquire yourself some fine clothes. 15 gold? Okay. Oh, yeah. So he'll, he'll give you 90 gold. 90 gold, which is divided 15 yeah. each. We'll just do it that way. This is very kind of you. Consider this your payment for your security. 
that costs. Thank you. Yeah. You know, those Sanguizians seem like some sketchy folk. I'm, I'm sure it won't hurt to have a few uh, aces in your hand in case something goes sketchy, right? That is such an interesting pronunciation of the people of the Sanguizian Empire. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I ain't been around much. I think he's trying to mix it with the word uh, sanguine. Um, so sang, sang, sanguine, queasy, and that. You know. No? A correction much, much expected from somebody of your intelligence, Archmage. Of course, uh, so we should probably head off to go shopping. These men will buy whatever things they do, and I will buy a beautiful dress. Well, I'm hoping I can get these raggedy old clothes just fixed up. Anybody with the mending spell would be able to do that for you, no? Are you not capable of casting the mending spell, Daka? Um, not today. But tomorrow. I mean, I never tomorrow. thought to try, and then I'll cast a mending on myself. <laughs> you never. <laughs> wow. And I, I, I never thought that was. Yeah, like, yeah. I was like, oh, you know what? They just, that would work. Yeah. Beautiful. Are they fine clothing? Yeah, they're like really nice, like, dip, like diplomats clothing. I will also say that they will most likely take any weapons that you have from you when you... How about a staff? It's like ornate looking staff. Actually, it's just your think of it, since you are security, I do not. If everybody's security has weapons, I imagine that. Regard, disregard what I said. Yep. It, it, literally immediately, as he mentions taking weapons away, he like uh, Diablo scoffs. Takes but. his hands off. Oh, uh, uh... <laughs> blood spreading everywhere. Renatus will pull his sword and then, and like a, and like a, like a glowing mist just, it just vanishes. It doesn't matter, we can take it with us, but he does like to show off. Seriously? Renatus likes to show off? I think he likes to play with his big sword. Tell me more. Well, we'll get to it another time. I'm sure Renatus is just waiting to sit down and talk to you about everything, right? Yes, of course. So, let's all go, Jack. We had a nice sit-down yesterday. He looked grumpy. No, okay. Never mind. World uh, doesn't have any spots on him now, does he? Why? Does the Moral Tamlish have any dark spots like he's turning to rot in any places by any chance? Uh, make an investigation check. Turning into that person. Hey, DM, is everything suspicious? It's a nine. It looks everything fine. suspicious. <laughs> when you're in one of my campaigns, everything is suspicious. Uh, no, he doesn't appear to have anything. He's a drow, it's hard to tell. Okay, well, I think uh, we will meet up with you at what time? If a specific uh, call time you would like us to meet up with you, or would you like to meet us with you there? You can arrive here tomorrow afternoon. Oh, afternoon. And then so we'll specifically, take a carriage to the city center. Very good. Uh, any specific color theme for this? Like, is it a masquerade ball? Or... It is not no. a masquerade ball. Okay. So I don't... Right it is! <laughs> so, uh, what we're going to do here is, rather than role-playing out, buying all your outfits and stuff, uh, I'm going to let y'all have some time to think about what your outfit's gonna look like uh, ah. that you're putting together for this fall and you'll be able to describe it a little bit however while that is while you're thinking those up are there any is there anything else that you would like to do before we we're out i'm giving you the opportunity to like you know quickly pass over some business that you'd like to do and then we can move to tomorrow afternoon 
immediately after. Uh, so Valerie's coat was being ready, going to be ready in three days, so that would be after this, right? Correct. The studded leather, okay. Yeah. Um, can I quickly go to like a library or something and just look up Zarexian history? Just like anything I can slightly find. Okay, make a investigation check. Skill. Lovely. Um, yeah, I want to join in on that. Can I get advantage? Yes. Thanks. You're welcome. Uh, one sec. I was on the wrong bit of my figure on Bobby. Advantage, investigation. 19. You rolled it twice. Uh, technically, you got a 13. Sorry. 13, sorry. I didn't see this. this, uh, this so, oh. you, you, you go to... Uh, you look around the city for the rest of the day. Uh, and what languages do you speak? Um, common, obviously, and Elvish. Okay. Um, there are no tomes here relating to the Zaraxan uh, history. Uh, the, okay. But you do catch wind that the city of Miradorn has a historian that is well versed, is one of the leading experts on the Zaraxan uh, kingdom. Do I get a name or is it just a historian? You want a name? You want a name to the well, historian? Well, how am I going to find him? I can't just go around and go, do you know historian? <laughs> that is his name. It's Historian. <laughs> uh, 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 Dice Cable. Just kidding. Let me get back to you on that. You don't have to call him more now. That's fine. Anybody else have any business that they would like to... Well, other other topics in the library would be uh, demonology, just extra shit, especially the the one we just had. Um, I know we we got a little introduction, but maybe more about uh, the the madness guy. Like, what are his like? What's more around it? Is there like? A, I don't know more about the other demon princes, and if there's more stuff coming, someone summoned it, what's what's the ritual around that? Like, knowledge that direction. So the the knowledge of how to summon a, uh, a demon prince would not be something that you would find uh, through any kind of public research. By the way, the story's name is Reshrek, uh, R-E-S-H-R-E-K, Reshrek. Uh, Bornfil, B-O-R-N-F-I-L. Um, Thank you. You do have some knowledge. You do. There's, it's mostly like ballads of like heroes that have fought against the four, the, the dark gods, uh, which you as players would know that there's really no true dark and light gods in this world. There's more so just gods, and some of them have a domain what's typically seen as evil, uh, rather than, you know. That sort of thing. The the children of Skade, the 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 children of of Zona, um, but you do find some information that there are a few other uh, demon princes. So the one that you have that you already have information on uh, would be the the god of madness, uh, Blue Garad, uh, B L U G A G A R A D. Uh, you also find information on the uh, goddess of. Rot and Decay, the demon princess of Rot and Decay, known as Beldenea, but it said that she had uh, been mostly destroyed pre the the, the tears of two uh about fifty ish years prior uh, by a band known as the Seekers. There's also uh, you find some information about a a demon prince known as Gorgonmar, uh, G R. G R O G R E N M as a Mary A R, uh, and he is the god of violent conquest. Argonmar? 
Orgrimmar. Not Targrimma. Orgrimmar. <laughs> oh, well, let's not say sorry about Gargrimma. He is he is something. Um. Anyway. Uh, specifically, the, the, the tome goes into detail of Gorgamar when he nearly toppled the kingdom of the sun, uh, the kingdom of Sielnor and Alnor, and when he sent legions of his demons to invade into the celestial realm uh, where the gods reside. Uh, and he almost succeeded until a band of mortal heroes stopped him. Uh, this is said to happen thousands of years ago, but... It is one of the most famous ballads known. Yep. That's all you managed to find at the moment. That's what I will be researching. Anyone else? All right. So we're going to start with uh, Valerie. Uh, Valerie, oh, what God. does your costume your your outfit look like oh gosh well first thing is that she had her tail done up um so it's like all like buttoned up with like red flowers probably roses uh to start with uh but uh, she is going with a sheer uh red uh, like silken dress uh cut high on one side uh with a black fur shawl to say it's almost it, it almost shimmers as she walks in it and it's a um so that she's probably wearing some of her regular jewelry um but uh yes just classic like uh lady on the of the town who has too much money like this is red red carpet wear okay diablo Diablo is going to be wearing a uh, a nice dark uh, three piece suit with a uh, frock coat on the top layer, nice vest underneath, and a uh, purple or not purple but a teal puff tie with uh, some nice, very thin gold colored pinstripes going through the whole thing. Ooh, stunning. Cram. Uh, so he already had like really nice clothes and after he's like mended them up, they're kind of like this, uh, this like navy, what do you call it, like a waistcoat with like a, like a little white shirt with long sleeves, but he's kind of like folded up so his arms are still showing and they're kind of just like up to her. He's got this red like puffy, what they call, um, it's a puff tie. Tie? Puff tie, yeah, like, yeah. like Diablo, uh, like navy pants like black shoes and then uh because he didn't have to spend his money he's like got some like gold silk embroidered into his um uh cloak so like around the edges it's got like a nice embroidery of gold now okay daka yeah i got a um a black frock crow frock coat um underneath a red tie and the the properly vest to it um uh some very nice black and and the red pants um gaiters made out of leather that are like high polished but my feet are still looking out of it um the my my properly uh jeweled gauntlet and the, the nice staff I have, and uh, on the on the coat I got it like there's specific uh, like embroidering in a in a different black which is shimmering, so nice. And I I'd say got my hat cleaned up again. Okay. And sticking sticking to the boulder. Renatus. Renata's bought nothing. <laughs> Solid. Because he is a knight to his goddesses and a knight always wears his armor. So the, uh, 
Immoral is wearing a, a black suit with a purple tie, a like a uh, amethyst color tie that complements his hair of Rom with a cane. Uh, he walks with it has an obsidian gem uh, top to it. Uh, Daka, you would recognize the cane to be his arcane focus. Um, but he does use it to to walk apparently from an injury that he seemed to have sustained a very long time ago. Uh, he does have a cloak as well. This cloak is shows his status as an archmage. It appears like as he is looking down the back, it has uh, you know runes uh, stitched into it that he explains is from a very good friend of his named Xylus. Uh, and the underside of the cloak itself is kind of like looks like this as it catches the light. A, a nebula, a purple nebula from that you would only be able to see at night in a very dark area. Mm. Looking very sharp, Archmage. I appreciate it. Are you all ready for the event? Well, I'd say most of us, except for Renatus, he doesn't care about fashion. Renatus, did you at least get your armor buffed for the night? No. No. Press the digitation. Clean it up. <laughs> Savages, you know. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Uh, so we're oh, all and f- weapons, and f- so. and and for the first time, I would have uh, some some heraldic signing from my noble family. <laughs> yeah, uh, Valerie also has like uh, underneath the shawl a uh, a little strapped case for her two fans as well. I didn't mention that, but she's going full Wonder Woman, hiding her fan behind her dress. <laughs> I must say, I was getting quite used to the um, the extra moss and fungi growing on me, but yeah, I gotta miss it. We're gonna get it back. If you're not wearing your armor, don't forget to unequip it. <laughs> so, uh, you are invited to a carriage that a moral house that's pulled by four horses as you are led down the cobblestone streets of the middle portion of Vilnira. Uh, at, at this point, it is a cold night. I didn't mention that we are going into the autumn season uh, earlier in the session, and the oil street lamps are being lit by these workers that are walking down the street with these long sticks of the flame attached to it. Some do have magical ability as they are just casting press digitation to ignite it, but for the most part, uh, most of them are using the, the, the lighting sticks for it. Um, you continue to go down until you come to a very large stone building that's kind of in the center of this center area. Uh, there are a number of fountains that are, are running water with lights being cast on. There are like dancing lights hovering around the area, illuminating the grounds. Uh, as uh, carriages are kind of being pulled up, you're in this line of carriages as people get out and are walked up a carpet into the the building itself. Uh, they are all dressed quite uh, beautifully. Every single person that you see here that is walking in and, and with some of the most elegant gowns and uh, other articles of clothing that you've seen, uh, people really spare no expense. The... Sorry, give me a second. Um, eventually, it's your turn to get out of the carriage and you are escorted up. The uh, Archmage has a little card, like an invitation card that he sets on a tray um, as you all walk through. And the first thing that you notice is this massive crystal chandelier that is in the center of this uh, foyer-like area with these double staircases that go off in there. Um, you hear music off to the left, a, uh, a number of string instruments, it appears. Uh, this is mostly a, a string instrument uh, band. And there are people just kind of walking around as, you know, someone comes up and offers to take your coats if you have any, if you so choose. Um, and and that's, that's all I have at the moment. Um, I would like to note, uh, just for a little bit of extra flair, Diablo's hair is, uh, 
done in a ribbon at two por two sections of his hair as his hair does go down to his lower back just to neaten that and just make that a little bit more neat he's uh wearing a few rings just adjusting his uh frock coat as he steps out of the carriage mm. been to many events like this Diablo? nah mm. not like this you seem to know how to dress the part I've had my fair share of, uh, books. That's How's your sure. etiquette? Oh, he's not going to need etiquette. He's going to make splash. Uh, and Valerie, like, pulls her fan out and, uh, uh, gestures for Diablo. Time to start, huh? Absolutely. Um, yeah, because we're bodyguard she, like, or whatever. She's, like, dancing around Diablo in behind with, like, the fan accentuating him as he moves forward. <laughs> Sorry, this is happening. <laughs> no, that's cool. No, I, I just wanted to mention I would have cast Mage Armor on myself. <laughs> that is very smart. Alric, it says, before you go, can you cast that on me too? I can do this a few times, but if I, if I fully commit to, to defense, okay. there's not much more offense. I just want to, like, are we going with that? I don't want to hear complaints later. Well, I mean, if you're going to put up a fireball in the middle of the ball, please don't. Not yet. Not, it's not ever. <laughs> I'm still... I'm still training for the intricacy of sculpting the spells. It has... There's, there's more to it. But okay, here we go. You get some mage armor, and you get some mage armor. <laughs> Just, like, touch a random person and give them mage armor. No, I'm giving it to you and Chrome. No, I know, <laughs> I just thought that would be funny. How much do you get extra with mage armor? It's, uh... Let me look it up. 13, 13 plus, plus, dex plus dex, yeah. So there we go. Three sleep shots gone. Woo. For the next eight hours. Yeah, true. Very useful. As you guys are walking uh, through there, you you are brought in by a moral to the room to the left where the string in, uh, quartet is playing. Um, as you're entering into the area, he immediately like tugs on Valerie's sleeve. That person over there. That is Governor Orgith. He points to a, a dragonborn man, uh, black scales, uh, with three horns on his head, dressed in a very nice uh, suit with a number of rings on his finger as well. He looks very uh, poised, I will say. And he tugs on it, uh, then he like whispers in another one to all of you. He's whispering this to all of you. That's the one over there. He, he gestures to a halfling man. Uh, that's very portly. He has a very long beard. Uh, his, his shirt is kind of pulling at the buttons as it seems he, uh, he eats well uh, every night. Uh, that is Rudabert Gold. And the way that he pronounces it is like Gould. G-O-O-L-D. Uh, Rudabert. R-U-D-I-B-E-R-T. Uh, he owns most of the trading caravans and ships in this area. He is quite a wealthy merchant. What's his name again, sorry? Uh, Rudibert. R-U-D-I-B-E-R-D Gold. G-O-O-L-D. I'll give you the, the, the spelling of all these names in a little bit. Um, at this point, a female dwarf will walk up to you directly uh she is wearing a emerald green dress with uh gemstones woven into her hair uh with bright green uh eyes that match her dress ah governor hangarbella um i do not know that if you are aware but this is the governor of the district of here currently and in fact this is her house that uh, is hosting this party 
Hello, Archmage. It is such a pleasure to see that you made it to this event. I am sorry to hear about your co-worker. I am certain that we have the finest experts examining the body, trying to discern the cause of death. I hope it's not another plague, as we are living in a city very close-quartered people. It would be very bad if we had such a thing. I'm sorry, um... And what are all your names? Uh, I am Diablo Dorado. This is my friend, Valerie, wonderful performer. This is uh, <clears throat> Baron Daka from Dolphinyak. Wait! I, I give a proper, proper bow. Baron Daka Crystal Gaze von Gorguts. Yes. Okay, this is uh, uh, Renatus. I'll point to uh, Cram. Uh, this is my friend Cram. We're all very, very honored to be in your home here. It is a pleasure to meet all of you. I am very happy to see such well trained people uh, defending our Archmage, although I do not think that he necessarily needs it. And it is interesting to see you. Anything to to be able to be graced by your presence, Governor. And uh, she, like, curtsies, uh, giving a flourish with the fan. Snapping it closed. It is always a pleasure to meet constituents of mine. Of course, you do such a good job taking care of the people in this district, and we appreciate it dearly. Oh, I, I must uh, introduce you to... to someone of my own guard this evening uh and she's going to like kind of like flick her wrist and you're it, it's very surprising that you haven't noticed this person prior but this there's this uh man wearing this very polished silver armor that doesn't have a single nick on it uh it has all sorts of um things like I don't, I don't is embossed the correct word uh but like roses and vines and everything uh he has long silver hair with just these uh ice blue eyes and long ears that go further than uh, most elves that you've seen to a point uh and he walks over as he has this sword that at his side that has on its hill and it's like this pale blue metal in the shape of a rose uh as the pommel and he walks over and this this is the head of the sun keepers uh may i introduce to you uh sir norfon very nice can to I, meet you can i like check him over for any signs of spots decay death investigation check, investigation check. <laughs> This will be the guy checking if he wants to do it at advantage. I mean, how are we going to discreetly do that? Okay, never mind. Yeah, of course, we can do that discreetly together. Yeah, um, it's a question of where, like, uh, oh, well, it doesn't help. He is too shiny. Does he get shiny? I got a four. Give yeah. me a second a that I can actually do it. So there does not appear to uh, be any spots here on the governor or Sir Narfon. Um, but he looks, it is such an honor to meet you, uh, fellow guards of very important people here in the city. Um, Diablo will go to reach out to shake his hand, you know, assumedly reaching slightly upwards. Yes, he is a, he is a tall person. Uh, and he'll, he'll grab your, and your hand, like, his, his handshake is very strong. It yeah, Diablo is... Diablo is trying to match that. 
Oh god, uh, they're and doing he's not that. wearing greaves or anything like that uh, on his hands or anything, but uh, his armor looks more like this is decorative. It's his formal attire, um, but he is he is seems to be sculpted from stone. He's quite beautiful. He is the definition of the worldly grace. Um, at this point, a, a, a scribe will walk over and whisper something into the governor's ear. I see. It appears, everyone, that our guests of honor have arrived. Guests of honor? No. Of course. The delegates. Um, at this point, the string quartet goes quiet. And the first thing you hear is the s steps of metal... Uh, boots on the wooden or I'm sorry the stone floor the marble floor it echoes through the halls introducing the emissaries of the Sangizian Empire the first person steps through is the person uh, wearing a full helmet uh, where their eyes aren't even showing from beneath it's just these very thin uh, slits uh, wearing this black iron armor uh, with a sword that has a, a skull as its pommel. He is the definition of edge. A long purple billowing cloak uh, falls off his shoulders. Sir Dorian Iglorian. Um, and like I said, I'll give you the spelling of all these names. So Sir Dorian Iglorian. Um as like his steps just one after a number uh, another very heavy armors uh heavy footsteps just echo through the area uh as he appears to be the guard and the emissaries of the Sengizian Empire Baroness Gloria Blackshire and her husband Baron Angus Blackshire uh, the couple walking in are wearing, uh, Gloria, I'll start with her, is wearing this long purple and white dress, this gown that just kind of like has a trail that kind of slightly drags behind her. Um, her hair is tied up as she has very pale skin and her hair is black with white highlights and there seems to be like jewelry uh, into her, her updo. I'll say her uh, eyeshadow is black and has kind of like blush put onto her cheeks as well to highlight her high cheekbones and her delicate frame. She is wearing a necklace of amethyst and silver uh, that has multiple, uh, what I want to say, chains that make kind of arcs that come down to a central stone. Um, you can estimate, Daka, that her necklace itself is worth about 5,000 gold as decorative jewelry with the amount of uh, diamonds and uh, amethyst are inlaid into it. She has dangling earrings uh, that match perfectly with her jewelry and long silk gloves upon her hands. Her husband is a man tall, uh, pale skin with a mane of red hair that seems to flow back down to his shoulders uh, with these bright red eyes. He has a very cocky smirk upon his face as he walks, and they seem to almost float, um, but they're clearly taking steps, but they just have this poised position about them, this aura, as they are escorted by their, their security guard, uh, Sir Glorian. Um, the governor, uh, Hangrabella, is going to walk up. Welcome. Ah, uh, Baron and Baroness, it is an honor to have you in our fair city after so many years of silence between our nations. Uh, may I introduce you to uh, Governor Orgith of the Northwestern District and uh, Governor Marlis of the Southeastern District. We are so honored to have you. And uh, of course, the talks of diplomacy can wait until a uh, future time, but for now, let us honor you. There's like a polite clapping that has a sense of unease about it uh, around the room. Uh, and, and as they scan the room, 
uh, and take in each and every person that they see. That is where we're going to take our mid-session break. So everybody, uh, that's where we're taking our mid-session break of tonight's session. Uh, as we uh, meet three members of the Sengizian Empire, uh, Baron Angus Blackshire, Baroness Gloria Blackshire, and Sir Dorian Iglorian. Um, yes. And, and and by the way, can I get a group wisdom check, please? Oh, he, really? Not a saving throw. I said a check. Okay. Okay. It's just as bad, so. All right. Oh, 20. Look at that. 13. Yeah, not bad. All right. So I'll say that, Cram, you get the sense that this uh, knight, uh, Sir Iglorian, uh, with a flick of his wrist, could probably wipe your entire party if he so chose. Oh, so this is the DM warning. <laughs> so that is what I'm telling you. Um, okay. And uh, if you're just now joining us. Uh, wow. Okay. Um, hello there. It's uh, really nice to see you tonight uh, at this uh, wonderful establishment. Um, so, you know, how you doing? You guys good? How are you doing, Michael? You good? I'm great. I can put you on the spot. So, in a say that that little banter there is the kind of exciting if thing you can expect from Lich Souls. No, really, um, not really. Uh, but like, really, if you're listening to us on the podcast networks, because you can really find us everywhere on the podcast networks. Thank you for listening. Um, but if you are listening, just know you can watch us live every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Central Time on Lich Souls, where we do this Dungeons and Dragons thing. And um, yeah, we we sometimes do more exciting things um, uh, than a ball. But, you know, we have a great time and we want you to have a great time with us. And if you miss us live and you don't want to just listen to us, why don't you watch us on Mondays when we put the live stream up on our YouTube channel? Hey. All right, we'll um, see you back yeah. here soon. Thank you so much, Guy. Uh, give us about 15, 20 minutes, and we'll be back momentarily after these messages. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. So where we last left off, the, uh, the emissaries of uh, the Sengizian Empire were just introduced uh, within this this event. The emissaries this ball of Bitchville, here in like... Mira. So. The Sengizian Empire. Um, I just realized how loud the music was, but you guys didn't because you didn't have it on. Uh, so the governors just introduced themselves to the the Baron Baroness and their knight uh, guard. Why, it's such an honor to be here. And uh, he's going to look over, uh, you know, scan the party. He's going to uh, make eye contact with a moral. Uh, and. and Baron uh, Blackshire will walk over and offer his hand to uh, Amora. I must admit, I would recognize you just from your reputation alone. Amora Tamlish is right, or Archmage Tamlish, sorry. I'm not much of a diplomatic person, and my. Oh, what is the word I'm looking for? Manners are not quite as refined as all of yours, I'm sure. But you were the one in Merdwin who helped take down the wards of Yundilbal Leg, was it not? And defeated the very infamous Archmage of Demonology there in Fair Style. I did what was required of me to keep peace in the region for the greater good, yes. Outstanding. Well, it looks like you have quite the entourage with you as well. Entourage is, uh, you know, say, a very specific word, but, uh, you know, we are the entourage who's also an entourage of another man. Uh, before you is Diablo Dorado. The nice to meet you. Oh, the pleasure is all mine. He reached out his hand and... It's cold to touch, but firm handshake. Hmm. 
Well, I'm sure with adventurers like you about, with this event is sure to go off without a single sense of danger. And to say, well, just extra, yeah. But uh, this city is well known for its capacity for defense. Of course, we have to make it nice and safe for our guests, no? Yes, of course. It's rare to see anyone from the Sangizian Empire, certainly delegates of your caliber. Is that the right word? Uh, the Baroness will come over and take her, her husband's arm. Oh dear, we must not pester them. I'm sure they will have other social circles that they'll like to attend to. No, it's no bother to us, Baroness. It's very nice to meet you both. Especially when you're the hot topic. So you are the talk of the city. Everyone knows. Somehow, but rumors get around, do they not? Especially when the supposedly secret Sangizian Empire makes itself known in the greatest city in the entire world. Well, it was a pleasure meeting all of you, and I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. Oh, he's looking at Valerie. Oh, it's uh, Valerie. A pleasure. Sure. Of course, Valerie. Justine, and, uh, she does a curtsy, flourishes with the fan. Um, it does, like, not just a, f a snap open, but it kind of twirls in her hand, and then she kind of, like, uh, juggles it up to her other hand just behind her back and then snaps it closed. Now, Governor Hangerbella, there is something I would love to speak with you about. Do you have a private office somewhere in this wonderful home of yours? I am afraid it is rather urgent. Of course, um, right this way. Excuse us. Of course. Go in peace. And I'll leave the area. Show off. But I'm a performer. What do you expect me to do? You didn't even say anything, Bannon. We're on the same level as them. Oh, yeah, right. Um, didn't I mention I don't like this stuff? Well, you can only learn by doing. Oh, no. I know how it works. That's why I shut up. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. <laughs> so, the Governor of Hangarbella and the Baron and Baroness, along with, uh... They're, they're not, I have left. They're going to talk about something urgent. Uh, Amoral is going about and like speaking to people. What would you all like to do while you're in this room of all the movers and shakers of the city? The way they went. Is there a guard watching that direction? So there uh, they went out from the doors of which you came in. Uh, mm -hmm. Are you going to try to like see what door they went through in the other room or? Yeah, she'll kind of like Valerie will try to mingle her way uh, towards that door kind of quickly um, to try and see where they've gone because she's curious to know. Yeah. Okay. So walking out from the door that you came from, that was on the left of the entrance, they went down a hallway to a door at the very end. There appears to be one uh, servant or staff member that you you don't quite know which. Uh, that is standing in the hallway um but you'd have to get past them or distract them if you want to listen at the door 
Uh, okay, we'll get past them. That is a quandary for sure. Uh, yeah, so she's going to kind of, uh, with weight, flicking her fan uh, quite a bit, um, kind of just walk up there looking like she's trying to cool herself off. I'm assuming it's warmer in the ballroom than it is out here. It is. Make it a deception so, check. Yeah. Uh, it's a 16. 16. Okay, so you are convincingly uh, acting as you're trying to cool yourself. You know, you have taking a little ice cube, rubbing it on your wrist, on the back of your neck, yeah. fanning yourself. Yeah, and she's just sort of like kind of like looking down looking you know like she doesn't like she's not really watching where she's going ma'am are you okay the, uh, the staff member will come over uh, of course just it's so hot in there uh, just and, and is it a male or female servant it is a male uh, and she kind of looks at them going, uh, could you, could you please uh, just, I need something, uh, uh, water or something. Uh, uh, just, of course, just uh, one moment uh, and make it, make a persuasion check for me. Persuasion check. 21. While this is happening, what is everybody else doing? Or is anybody with Valerie? Are you all just walking around the room? Um, and I would like, okay. like, uh, Crown, you want to join me for the rest of the party? Maybe we find some nice information about city, you, past, history. Hmm, I'm not sure this is the place for my history, but we were told to come here by a god. There must be something to look out for. I'm not sure what, but I was hoping, Renatus, you might... Can you, any way you can contact this god again to find out why we're here? I mean... There might, there might be a chance that if I send up a prayer that she might, that they might contact me, but I can't make any promises. Better than nothing. So, uh, we will mingle, and you'll tell us what happens? Yes. Because remember, Chrome, you're a hot topic, too. Nobody knows you. <laughs> people love asking questions. Hmm. I would prefer people didn't know me. No, I mean... Your kind is special. Yes, and what if some mad scientist decides they want me? for experiments. Well, we'll blow them up. Uh, okay. Not here. <laughs> sure. Um, Diablo will just to uh, look like he he's, you know, there doing what he's supposed to be. He'll kind of uh, stand off to the side uh, near wherever they might have beverages and things like that, but he'll keep a line of sight on uh, the Archmage. But also kind of shift his vision every now and then to where the uh, uh, emissaries went off to. Okay. So the uh, back to Valerie as this is happening. Um, mm -hmm. The... Servant left the hallway mm -hmm. to go get you something to help. Yeah. What are you doing now? Yeah. Uh, she will, as he moves quickly, um, but quite quietly, try to move towards the door where okay. she believes they're talking to try to listen. All right. Make a perception check. Perception check. Yeah. She's going to, like, keep the fan up and not move it so there's no noise. So it looks like she's just leaning against the door to try to cool off. Let's see if this goes. 16. 16. Uh, the voices seem intense, I will say. The, the, the like, there's very pointed tones. 
Um, but you hear the upon going into the it appears that they've already gotten into the conversation, but you hear uh the governors speaking, mostly uh Hangar Bella. I assure you that we do not know of these insinuations that you are throwing at us. Uh the Baron was speaks this fine. If this is not resolved, it will quickly become your problem as well. This is not something that just affects our empire, but anyone with the touch of death added to them. I, we have many things going on in the city, but I have not heard of anything with what you're describing. At this point, the server will come back. Oh, uh, uh, ma'am, you're not supposed to be in here, but I have uh, uh, this refreshing lemonade for you. And she sets to, to Fan, and she'll, like, put her hand on his shoulder and give a reassuring squeeze um, and, you know, take the, the lemonade uh, and take a sip and try to, like, lead him. Like, as she, she's supporting, it needs support. Uh, to, to, you know, across the hall. Is there, like, a broom closet anywhere nearby? Uh, make a investigation check. Sure. There's always a broom closet. 17. 17, yeah. I mean, there's appears to be, like, a utility closet. In the yeah, hallway. yeah. Uh, yeah, so things, uh, yeah, so it's just gonna kind of lead into that thing. Can I, can I just, can you give me some, uh, a little darker somewhere to, to, to rest. This, the lights are so, are so bright. Can I ask what you're trying to do right now so I know which direction to take I'm not trying this. to seduce him. I'm not trying I, to seduce I, I, him. I just, I, I just want to know what you're trying to do. What are you trying to do with this man yeah. in the room closet? I mean, that's, that's what he thinks is happening. That's but what the event, well, but Okay, but we'll what see. are you trying to do? <laughs> so I don't you know. Knock him so, out. so he, you're gonna try to knock him out? Maybe. We'll see what happens. Okay, so he's like, Oh, uh, um, he has, he has like a little flushed look upon his face, uh, and he's gonna I mean, he's take into this, this utility room where there's like all kinds of like cleaning supplies and smells yeah. of pine saw. <laughs> yeah, you know what? She's gonna talk to him for the next minute and completely change her tone as she's still holding onto his shoulder and tell him of the most horrific things that can happen to him as I use my words of terror. And what exactly man. does that do? Because I think this is the first time you've used it. Yeah, uh, I can attempt to see paranoia in its mind, uh, making them uh, they have to see, see the saving throw uh, um, against my spell save or be frightened of me for the next, uh, yeah. Uh, and they have to, uh, yeah, they have to frighten of me for the next hour. You got a five. Okay. Um, and, you know, this is like a total shift, um, you know, entirely in personality. She went from seducing. Um, and so he's terrified of her now. And she's going to say, uh, thank you very much. I need you to stay right here. If you come any closer, you don't know what's going to happen to you. It's so dangerous out there. You make an intimidation check with advantage. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's a 22. 22. <laughs> I, I was just trying to help. He's just yeah. like sit in the corner and kind of, like, kind of slide down the wall and like he's just gonna start yeah. crying. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna, you know, uh, walk back out, leaving him in that closet, terrified and crying. And she is going to casually walk back to the door if there's no one there. Uh, there's currently nobody outside the door or anything like that. Yeah, um, and, and try to see if she can cast catch anything else. The last thing um, that you catch so in this conversation will, yeah. uh, is, I will have the archmages of the college look into it, but I cannot guarantee that I, it's going to be of much help. I've never heard of this before. Like I said, it will become your 
problem. If it continues to be ours, this plague will continue to spread. The door swings open. And the Baron's uh, standing there. Yeah, she's just... So, do I have a little bit of warning before this happens? Your footsteps go to the door for just a few seconds. Okay. For just a few seconds, okay. Uh, okay, uh, going to quickly disguise self as wearing the same dress um, and it's not as distinctive, uh, you know, and just drop the shawl um, and tear a little bit of the fabric and she's going to look like a completely innocuous uh, dwarven woman in an oversized dress. I'm sorry, but it's the Baron staring before you. Can I help you with anything? I'm just going to like like um uh, hold the mouth a little bit um like like she's you know had a little bit too much to drink and and you know warble a little bit make a deception check with an advantage okay i like being a sneaky person <laughs> this is a like dwarf more getting it. drunk that's a uh, lie so yeah it's a 21 and a 21 21 Oop, my dice just rolled across my whole office. Three seconds. Okay. Governors, it appears that one of your guests needs a place to sit and some water. He's just going to walk past you, the Baroness, and uh, the knight following behind. And soon enough, they enter back into the room. Uh, Valerie, in your dwarven form, you are brought to a bench in the main room, and you're given mm -hmm. a glass of water. Yeah. Yeah. And just kind of, like, uh, drink it and to find a place to wander off when people aren't paying attention anymore to change to to you know re, re, you know i'll say release that the happen, disguise and you'll rejoin the group in a little bit so yeah uh cram and daka what were you trying to do um I'm trying to like mingle with people you know just trying to get like a general vibe on what these people think about the sanguizian empire and whatnot you know okay so be go like, ahead and make an inside check what? Or just like a, you know, oh, what do you, what do you think, you know? Uh, insight, you said. Did that roll? Uh, six. Uh, walk into... Oh, you rolled yeah. it twice. Yeah, Why are you rolling it twice? I don't know. I don't hear the first one, and then the second one makes a noise for some reason. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, I'll say, I'll say it's a twelve because you're walking around with Doc. It's both of you doing it together. Okay. Um, so you you walk up to Rudibert Gold and. I do not have any quite uh, particular opinion about them. I don't do any trade or anything of that sort. So I have tried to make connections there, but it has not quite uh, worked out in my favor. Oh, very sorry to hear that. I'm sorry. And, and um, let me introduce you with uh, my friend here. This is a uh, Skeberry Mortif, um, which is this uh, Aarakocra woman wearing a white robe that has the symbol of Kresna on it. Um, what, what do you think of the uh, Sengizian Empire? This is an interesting conversation to have with the emissaries. They're so close. The, the, I'm sure they're hearing it. It's quite nice. Um, I believe that there is goodness in everyone if you dig deep enough. Oh, good. Jolly good answer. I like this one. Hmm. So, you think what's on the surface isn't very good then? I believe that there's been high tensions between them and us as of late, but the Empire has existed for several centuries, to my knowledge. Good to know. Good to know. Proper level, of, a proper level of uh, misunderstandings. 
Indeed. Um, I want to specifically look out for um the the black dots and that. Make an investigation check. Because that that was mm, the point of me and Crown walking through the room. Oh, At least from my from from my perspective. Cool. Right. Normal roll. As this is happening, the Baron and Baroness will re-enter the room, and the Baron will go to um, the Archmage Immoral. Immoral. I wanted to say goodbye for, well, before we retire for the evening. My wife is not feeling so well, so we will be retiring this evening. I hope wish you. I I I hope to meet with you before we leave the city of course Baron it's more I am more than happy to uh, discuss anything you'd like and I of course you can find me at the Mages Guild very good good evening he looks at each of you looks at uh, the other good, good evening to you as well you have a great evening there Baron turn and leave the room uh what'd you get on your investigation there daka daka eight an eight that's a natural one i see do we have natural ones on our skill checks now that's still a natural one you're gonna record it on your your stat sheet right oh, okay yeah sorry that your 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 eyes fall out <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to get a, a, a closer look at the head priestess and the, the merchant, and a fruit fly will fly into your eye as you do so. It's just not a mosquito. I'm, 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 I'm sorry, are you okay? There appears to be something irritating your eye. Yeah, yeah, pretty much annoying. <laughs> just hardcore rub it to, to, to get it out. Okay, <laughs> tell me more. No. <laughs> At this point, Valerie will rejoin the group. Yeah, she's like gathered her shawl um, and Valerie. is using it to cover the, the tear she made in her dress. I'll quickly cast some bending on it for you. Well, she's hiding it, so I, I appreciate it. I won't cast it. bending on it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. uh, <laughs> this, this, these all things will come in their own time. So Valerie joins the group. Oh, my sorry, I was getting a little hot, but uh, I'm feeling better now. So did I miss anything interesting? No. No one seems to have any strong opinions about these people, or they aren't willing to say them here. They're diplomats, why would they say anything? Thought they might speak their mind. Politics. I mean, they only speak poison words behind your back. Well, they did speak merchant, but I don't want to bore you with numbers. What's number? How much money did you make? Me? Nothing. They were talking about no trade with Singazian or having a hard time establishing some kind of connections. I suspect trade is difficult in this uh, area either way. I don't even get the whole problem. There's not even a war. <laughs> Isolationist nations don't tend to do as much trade. Especially when their people are already dead. That main trade That's... seems to be flesh coming in. That's a minor inconvenience. Renatus, have you managed to hear from your god yet about why we are here? Am I? Uh, you have not exactly gotten any response back. Okay. 
uh, Renato should mainly just be asking, like, not even, like, uh, don't, you don't even have to speak, basically, you don't even have to speak to me, just some kind of sign to point us in the right direction. For, for the sake, I'll let you make a religion check, but... Okay. There are spells Dude. for that. Yeah, there's going to be like a like one of those cat posters just that said just hang in there. <laughs> well, guess who ain't got those spells? <laughs> you're not a magic man. You're a martial man. What happened? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Uh, got a 15. Uh, 15. Yeah. Not terrible. Not terrible, but the, it's not exactly a place of power for the goddesses that you're trying to make a connection with. Um, and like I said, they, it's not like the previous campaign where they are able to communicate as well. Um, and you don't get a response back, at least for the time being. I, um, I haven't heard anything yet. Hmm. So Moral Tamlish still with us? He's still there. Hmm. So. We are his entourage. What do, we, what do we think the takeaway from tonight is? I, did you have any opportunity to hear from the, uh, from them anything except for polite words? I do think it was interesting how they were only here for about an hour before they left. Oh, yes. They just came and spoke with the governors and then immediately mm. left. Well, apparently the wife was ill. But, uh, what does the world, what does the term and she kind of whispers death touched mean to you? Does that mean something to us? Uh, everybody can make an arcana check. Sure, I'll make an arcana check. Why not? <laughs> I asked it, why not? Oh, and finally I'm actually something decent at those. 18. Finally something smart. 11. I rolled a 19. I got a 13. Yeah. Please. The plus one gets better than the freaking bard. <laughs> I'm the worst roll. Um, Death touched refers to someone who is an intelligent undead or has someone who brought was, has been brought back to life by in terms of resurrection uh, or anything along that sort. Well, what if, uh, have you heard any rumors as I know the old field is demonology of a plague affecting those who are death touched? That is not something that I have heard of. But I know several people who have been brought back to life via resurrection. But it's interesting indeed if there is a plague affecting such people that would infect all of the nobles of the Sangizian Empire. Have any of the governors, have they been resurrected? To my knowledge, no, but that is something that I would not allow the public to know so freely. I am an archmage of an independent guild. I am not a government official. I have a suspicion. I heard some echoes while I was cooling off in a wall and there was a heated discussion about some form of plague. I wonder like if the, the demon showing up in the city is in any way connected to what is happening in St. Kisian Empire. It seems unlikely and it most likely might be two separate issues. It's perhaps one is just capital capitalizing off the suffering of the other. I do not know. But your colleague died of something weird? Magic is a dangerous craft. Well, I'm just saying, if, if, if we had more clues on what kind of plague, we could maybe find it. 
And the plague in the city of this size with a lot of people. I would suspect that this, is something, this is something that is likely being kept on the wraps to avoid a panic. I don't think that's a smart decision. I mean, if it only affects these death touched, only the ones who have been brought back, then it will only affect the top few people that can afford such a luxury. I doubt it's ever that simple. We do nothing. The only thing we could do would be to find one of these people who are sick, which I would wonder if the Baroness is one of them. Mm. Or perhaps the Governor. Valiant observation. Who knows? Perhaps the Watchers are spreading it. Okay, that's a, that's a hardcore theory there. Hmm. Now you're the one with too many questions. It's always the one with too many questions. <laughs> well, I was more speaking about you with your... No, oh, it's okay, I'm just trying to be difficult. Jumps. <laughs> I read about it on the dark web. It's a web I found uh, deep in the uh, underdark. Mm. It's a spider wrote in words. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, I believe it might be best if we retire for the night. Of course. Sounds fine by me. Is there a particular place, place that you are staying here in the city? Uh, we were staying at the Prancing Tabby. We oh, did. Really? We're going, going back we're... to there? <clears throat> it's late now, right? It is late. Yeah, so the Prancing Tabby's in the same district as us, isn't it? The same, it, like, uh, section of the city. It's just yeah, four we levels have, down. We, yeah, we can't get back to the other place because we have to take the train. I am familiar with the place, but, uh... Allow me to, uh, offer you some quicker travel. And he's going to flick his wrist and he's just going to teleport y'all to the, the Prancing Tabby. Save wow. y'all some bits. Wow. A bit. He just used a bit. Uh, he has to, but he'll be like, um, I'm just going to head back to my study for the evening, but I do appreciate you being here, and uh, the information that you found out was quite interesting. I will look more into it. I just want to say, mm, I will look into you. I'm surprised I could hear it from so far away. They were speaking so angrily. Thankfully, the, the hall was empty except for one servant who Valerie, you know, thankfully. I used to be a member of the Black Order. You did not have to lie to me. Well, he's okay. He survived. He just pissed himself. What did you do? Nothing, nothing. Uh, Don't worry about it. Let's not uh, waste your time anymore, Mr. Uh, Archmage. But you know, you may not have called us friends yes, yet, but we will become fr fast friends, I promise you. So you guys are welcomed. You walk back into the Prancing Tavern, and, and for the hour, it is uh, it is late. the t The tavern is completely empty uh, outside of Mary, the owner. Um, oh, hello! Uh, welcome back. I have not seen you the last couple of days. I was worried. We were venturing a little bit far. Um, but we are okay. Your hospitality was dearly missed. I'm happy to hear it. Is there anything I can get you? Suppose we should have, uh, would not be bad to have a late evening aperitif. Now, now you want to get drunk. There were free drinks there. You're assuming I wasn't drinking? I didn't drink. I didn't drink, none. I had to keep my wits sharp. 
we were at a ball. I seem to have torn my dress here. Um, any, by any chance, Grom, could come? Could you fix this for me? <laughs> no. <laughs> I love How that did... so much. How did you Many... tear your dress? <laughs> I will just say that the uh, the servant uh, who was seeing me in such distress got a little handsy, and I had to remind him why you do not try to take advantage of a lady. You cut his fingers off? No, I just scared the living shit out of him. I may be a... Uh, a beautiful lady, but that does not mean I had to put up with abuse from young men. Um, oh, do we trust that story? Of course. Why would our friend lie? Do you, do you want to do I am not check? sure. Do you want to There's... do an insight check? <laughs> They've Come been on. pulling our legs all the time. Let's well, you're pulling your legs, Stacker, right? <laughs> my legs are perfectly connected to my body. I can take his legs off if you want. Yeah, but we'll... Uh... Ah! He'll take off his uh, frock coat and just kind of sit there in his in his vest and uh You can't even there. like you can't you can't roll lower than that. Forget it. <laughs> I can certainly See? try. <laughs> <laughs> take your natural one. <laughs> Daka is still was that a natural one? No. <laughs> that is a five. Yeah. I, mean, I think Valor, you rolled a natural one. I did. Mm -hmm. I'll add that to my stats gleefully. And Doc, well, it's a five. Oh. So, uh, is there anything else should you'd like to do it? before you go to bed? Should, should we tell that the governess that she has handsy uh, servants? I think we're not going to discuss what happened with the governess. I don't think it would do anything to benefit. Uh, why don't we? Why don't we just uh, decompress after a uh, social event like that and have some drinks and get on to bed? So they uh -huh. play some music and have some drinks and. Yeah. Wrap up the evening. Okay. Unless anyone else wants to do anything. Nope. All right. So you head upstairs uh, to bed um, here at the Prancing Tabby. And were any of you sharing rooms? Probably me and Orna again. Oh, I'm sleeping with the robots. And Dak Valerie would be alone. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is since this is kind of been the place you've been staying in the city, I'm going to give you a visual. Oh, okay. Of this tavern, and I will let you all pick your rooms and put your tokens in. Oh. All right, where's the red room? That's too close. I'll let the, the stream see this as well. Uh, I mean, obviously this is happening. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. What a wonderful, what a wonderful tavern or inn. Sorry. Oh, Rome. do you want the do you want the purple room? Good choice. Would Diablo uh, take in the purple room? She will tell you that she has a room for each one of you now. She has some vacancies. So if you want your own rooms, you can't have them. I, can I mean, the pale blue room if you want the purple room there, Diablo. No, I mean, in my head, or... I'm just kind of like sits on the floor and just kind of like powers down for a bit. He doesn't really sleep. Okay. So he has, he has no Wait, so bed. instead of Daka being with with those two, wouldn't it be, you know, smarter for, you know, Renatus to be with them since all of them just kind of power down? None of us actually sleep. They were still aware of people's nope. movements for four hours, like while they're in like a well, yeah. mode. Yeah, that's basically what I do as well. I think so at that weird. point, it would make more sense to have uh, you with somebody else. That way, there's more surveillance. 
That's fair. Yeah, I think the setup we got going now is probably the best best case scenario. Okay. But if you do want to take your own room, as That's mentioned, fine. that is I'll, welcome. I'll be, there. I'll just be over here in the cuck chair. In the armchair. <laughs> I'll be in the cuck chair. Don't mind me. <laughs> yeah. So but he doesn't sit, he doesn't sit in the chair. A single light bulb over his head. He doesn't sit in the chair. He stands straight up in it on the cushions. Actually, wait, I'm just going to, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm hide in the like, chest. So it's just like, no, I, I just say like he T poses at night. Like they just forgot how to animate his model. Jesus Christ. Slavic squat. He's just doing squats all night. Okay. Okay. That's not at all suspicious. Why, why would I be suspicious? Suspicious. Well, why would you give us a visual? Uh, did, we, did we check my yeah. dark spots? A little. <laughs> I want to look up. So, uh, <laughs> a little quick aside. <laughs> uh, this map certainly does bring back memories, but. <laughs> yeah. Oh god. Oh boy. Oh. No, 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 no. This is not. Is I don't. I don't believe so. This is not I... the bag of holding monster. Map. This is. This is a, even an even deeper cut. Okay. But I, I won't I won't speak any more on it. Okay. Yeah. Can you tell us which episode of Prestige Encounters to to None. watch that? Okay. No. Okay then. So, uh, you all fall asleep, uh, except for those who don't need sleep, apparently. And Ronis, I need a perception check, please. All right. Oops. Got that. We're good. We're like a bubble. Perception check. Perception check. Boop. Ah, that's a four. That's a four. As you're Fine. sitting uh, in this chair. For for a, a moment, you you know you look down and you you're inspecting your gear that sort of thing. You kind of like zone out for a second and you look back up, and you see a pale gray body with a hollowed face standing over Diablo's bed in the corner, um, specifically. It has sunken black eyes and like it's it has a humanoid, uh body but no discernible features at the same time its neck is haunched over with its back uh it has many deformities that make it stand crooked um and that sort of thing and, and, and it has four arms as well and as it looks at you it's looking down at diablo and then as you take notice of its presence its head slowly turns to look at you and it lifts uh, at one of its arms to its mouth. Well, I will not. <laughs> uh, Renatus will stand and he'll summon his sword. I do not think that you want to do that as it holds a uh, it's one of its arms turns into a very sharp blade and puts itself to Diablo's neck. Why is it <clears throat> that you are interfering with our plans? Do you know Who's... what you are even doing here? I was simply tasked with bringing those who those who have the undead those who have not found their rest to help them pass over you seem like a nice person I'm sorry that I have to kill you uh, 
So he's he's paying attention to me, right? He's looking at you. Cool. Uh, right behind him in this corner, I'm gonna summon my echo. Okay. Not unless I kill you first. What you doing? Let's see, let's see, let's see. Dude, nope, that's the wrong thing. Uh. Where is it? Where is it? Ah, there it is. Um, damn, that's only if I take the Akadek action. Um, well, I can't. Uh, okay, uh, I'll swap places with it. Okay. Suddenly. And I'm going to I'm going to try to grab this thing. Okay, and has grappling has changed. Let me pull Which it. I've never used it to begin with, so it's like... <laughs> so it's all new to me anyway. <laughs> all right, so... It's an attack roll <laughs> made <laughs> against... It, the check is equal to 8 plus your strength modifier plus your proficiency bonus. Okay. And then I have to make it a strength or agility uh, or acrobatics check. So you have to make an attack roll. It's a saving okay. throw for you. Sorry, it's to escape a grapple. Hold on. It's basically he's setting the DC for your your save, your 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 strength or dex saving throw. Wait, is it strength oh, or dex? On. It's your attack roll and arm strike versus my strength or uh, dexterity saving throw. And then to escape from it, it is eight plus your strength plus your proficiency bonus. Apparently this is simpler. It's not. It was way simpler last time. Go ahead and make an well, attack roll on right arm strike. Roll. This is not going to go well. That's an 11. All right. So with that, um, I'm going to have everybody roll for initiative but you will not enter the turn, or, turn order until you are conscious and aware of the battle. Um, is this a surprise attack? This is not a surprise attack. Okay. That's actually uh, so surprising. It's going to succeed against yep. this. Um, and with that, uh, it is time for battle. Battle only one and okay. it's fine oh wait a second it is easy. i did that why did that not put why did it not okay i need to fix that because it did not put that in the right spot okay um <sighs> it's on it's no, no action required. Cool. I think having to figure out a DC by eight plus this oh. plus this is a lot more difficult right. than contested rolls. But you know. So since grappling, way. since grappling is now considered hack, was always a attack. Uh, no. Wait, was it? I don't know. I've never used. I've never grappled before, so I don't know. It was athletics uh, and acrobatics contested against athletics and acrobatics. My, my echo is going to come up and swing at it. That's a 10. Uh, that will miss. Yeah. Um, I, I, I hate to interrupt, but since these are new rules, the grapple version of an unarmed strike isn't a attack roll to initiate. It's just the roll against the DC. Only uh, damage requires an attack roll. under the unarmed strike in the uh, rules. Oh, so. You roll an unarmed strike and that's the DC. It's not, an, it doesn't count as like an attack roll to initiate an oh. ability. Okay, never, never mind then. 
All right, well then, forget everything I just said. <laughs> okay. Unless I, I action surge. You got to see if it's grappled first, man. It's not grappled. He already said it wasn't. Oh, okay. 24, that's more like it. That's uh, a roll. That will hit. That's going to be oh, you did 12 that slashing. Now I'll have my echo move up, and then he'll also take his attack. 21. Uh, 21 hits. Or an additional nine slashing. All right. And then... Uh, I think that's pretty much all I can do. Would, would kicking be a free action, or is that considered an attack action? Kicking? Yeah, I was going to kick his bed to try to wake him up. Uh, I'll say the Diablo just gets woken up by this. It's not stealth or Fair anything. Enough. So okay. Diablo gets woken up by this. Uh, and now it is its turn. All right. This creature is going to... Um, I need both uh, Diablo and Renatus to make a wisdom saving throw, please. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. Pinkly winkly. Yeah. 18 16. for me. 18 and 16. All right. You feel like being in the presence of this creature is uh, affecting your mind. And yeah, I'll say that's what wakes you up. Like you feel this pain um, in your head, but nothing will happen as a result of it. Um, this creature is going to uh, attack Renatus first. Okay. It takes one of its long arms and it's going to launch it into your try to launch it into your chest. Uh, that is a 20 to hit. That'll hit. All right. You are now considered grappled as this harpoon arm is like in your chest and pulls you in. <laughs> um, do, do, oh, shit. Do, do. Gonna get a big kiss. That's gonna big pull sloppy. you in. It's gonna pull you in. Bite your head off. Hold on. I have to give you the damage for the harpoon going into your chest. So just give me a second. Um, 21 points of piercing damage. Oh. How much? 21. 21. Okay. 21. And now I need you to make another wisdom saving throw, please. Alrighty. 18. 18. You're going to take half of the psychic damage. Oh, shit. That will be 10 points after it's half, so it's 20, divided by 2, so 10. Take that. A lot. It's fine. All right, so you, you are currently grappled by this creature as this harpoon arm has stabbed into you and it's pulled you close. Um, and with that, we're going to go to Diablo's turn because you already took your turn for this round. <clears throat> All right. Diablo, you're waking up and you see this this gray contorted creature standing over your bed. All right. So Diablo will kind of do one of those like, you know, kicking, kicking up and standing up on his bed using half of his movement to stand from prone. And uh, he will. Uh, shit. He's going to attempt to grapple on this creature. Okay. You're a human centipede. So it's a, uh, what, eight plus strength plus proficiency, you said? So, no, it's an attack roll, and that determines my DC. An unarmed strike to grapple, and then the escape after it's grappled is eight plus your strength modifier plus your proficiency bonus. I just read it. Right under the unarmed strike tab? Yeah. <clears throat> I will reread it for I'll read it out loud so there's no confusion over this. Yeah, I mean I'm okay. I I, I just want to make sure because I'm also looking at the new rules so for it this says... thing. Hold on. 
Let me find exactly. What, okay. Players can grapple target as part of an unarmed strike action, which means the target must succeed on either a strength or dexterity saving throw. So it is an unarmed strike. Yes. Which determines the DC. Whatever you roll <clears throat> determines the DC. And then it says, additionally, escaping a grapple now requires either a strength or agility uh, skill test against the fixed escape DC. So the yeah. eight plus the uh, grappler strength modifier plus the proficiency bonus is only once they're grappled and it's to escape it. The rules... Like like I said, the twenty twenty four so rules that I'm looking at. Do you read what you're saying instead of Yes, I'm gonna first? I'm gonna I'm going I'm that's what I'm about to do. The unarmed strike, which grappling is an option. There's three options. There's damage, grapple, and shove. Damage is the only one that says you need to make an attack roll before getting the result. Grapple, specifically, you can make an unarmed strike to grapple. The target must succeed on a strength or dexterity saving throw, or it has the grappled condition. Okay. It, it's like it's like casting a spell, save or suck. Yeah. So what is the total that I need to roll here? That is eight plus my strength, so plus my proficiency, which at this level is what two? That would be fourteen. Okay, I got a twenty. <laughs> okay. Mm. All right. So fails to grapple. And Diablo will use a point of focus or mojo to make a couple unarmed strikes. Some attack ones. It's going to be a 19. 19 hits. Or. Seven points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. And that will be a 12. 12 misses. All right. And that will be my turn. All right. It is now its turn again. I need both uh, Renatus and Diablo to make wisdom saving throws at the start of its turn. The 12. An 8. All right, so both of you are going to take 3d6 psychic damage. That is 11 points of psychic damage as the anxiety of you being alone and the, this assault starts to flood your mind. Your ears and your nose start to bleed as your mind is racked with this amount of damage. Um, it's now going to make its harpoon arm attack against you, Diablo, as it has two harpoon okay. arms. Um, that is going to be a 17 to hit. Misses. Seven, yeah. 17 misses. Awesome. All right, and then it's going to use its uh, Sorrowful Embrace. I need a Wisdom saving throw from Renatus. Yep. Okay. He's a sad boy. He's sorrowful. 20. 20. You're going to take half damage. Eight points of psychic damage. That's after. Up. That's already halved. So that's eight there. Um. All right. And now we're to Renatus' turn. Cool. Okay. Everybody else is sleeping um, peacefully. Yeah, I know. I was going to say, what if you're just having a like nice peaceful sleep. Nobody's yelling out. <laughs> All right. Let's see. We're magic cat. We're spellcasters. We need our rest. Valerie's going to hurt me. Sleep. She has a like a thing over her eyes, uh, like a blindfold. Absolutely. She has. She's full on she's... melatonin. Yeah, there's like a uh, 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 like fantasy era like little humidifier. Um, she's got like the the cucumber mask. She has and a everything. wave machine. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Okay. Uh, bonus action swapping with my echo. So, 
Oh, wait, I'm no longer grappled. Hey. Okay. You remembered. I did remember. I remember. I okay. remember. Um, and then... Let's see. One action. Hmm. Second. Got to do some math here. So I have 15 movement left, which means I can move 30. Or. Ooh. Okay. I can get there. Uh. Wait. Dash. No. I'll, I'll uh. Disengage for now. Okay. And then. Here to the wall. And, um. Uh, yeah, that's really all I can do for now. All right. That is indeed all you think you can do for now. Diablo, it's your turn. All right. So. Basically, you know, he's all propped up, ready to fight and everything. This shit kind of hurts. Uh, he's going to scream. Just everybody. Everybody. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he just calls everybody to to his room. You're all awake now. <laughs> Three rounds later. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> well, that's what I was gonna. You could have done that. <laughs> I listen. I was. Never mind. He's not. I was, gonna go, bang on the, I was gonna go bang on the wall. Be like, wake the fuck up. In, the, oh, the, in this, in this case, it's turn. just a two-man TPK. We're gonna let it happen. No, it's yeah. fine. Fine. And uh, Diablo is going to make an unarmed strike uh, against this thing using his action. Okay. Martial arts attack for uh, fifteen. 15 misses, just misses. All right. Slips off of it. And then Diablo, he will snap his fingers in a little burst of blue and gold. He'll just get a little bit faster as he uses the enhanced step of the wind and runs out to the hallway. Okay. Which gives him the benefit of both the dash and disengage action. Okay. Punks, man. Anything else return? Uh, that'll be it. All right. It's now the, around to the hallway. You see, uh, Sophie, sitting right here. What is going on? <laughs> Sophie or Mary? Not Mary. That's what I meant. Okay. That's... Uh, all right. It is now Arnar's turn. Or no. Or no. Or no. Uh, we got a good old 30 feet. He's going to... That's Mary. I forgot. I forgot. That's the print name. My bad. If he's sat down, is it 15 feet to then get up? If, I mean, if he is sitting down, he's technically prone. Okay. So it yeah, would be okay. 15 feet to get up. 15. So 20. Prone or half prone. I don't care. Um, <laughs> what? 25. So he's gonna stand right there. Uh, action dash. Woo -hoo -hoo. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 to go there. That would wake everyone up if we weren't already awake. Brum, 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 brum. Oh. I'm sorry, what and was that, that? All... that again? That's it? Okay. Bruh. It Bruh, is now Bruh, Bruh, Bruh. <laughs> his turn. Um, he is going to launch his spike arm at Renatus. No. As he does have a reach. So the spike arm launches, like it's like a harpoon almost, like launches towards you, Renatus. Uh, that is going to be a 19 to hit. Sorry, yep, that it's hits. actually 22 to hit. All that hits. right. Um, bop, bop, He's um, going down. Yep. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Got like no health. No, it's 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 happening. It's it, 23 yeah, seven. points of damage. Renatus is down. All right. I do need a wisdom saving throw from Ornard, please. 
Heck, or not if he hit that on Taco when he was in one health, that would have been an instant kill. Would it not? That's funny. D&D, man. It's D&D. 13 on the Orna saving throw. All right, Orna's going to take some psychic damage. As being in proximity to this character, this, this, this creature, um, fills his mind with anxiety. That is 13 points of psychic damage. Oh my. Does Orna perceive anxiety? Uh, if, if it's not a feature on their character sheet, I don't think too much into it. Just like how health potions mm -hmm. work on a mechanical being. Mm -hmm. Actually, we, that is we a have feature. <laughs> yeah, it's just, yeah. Uh, and that is his turn. It is now Mary's turn. Oh. Is Mary it actually the fight? Oh, God, she's one of them. She oh, is. wait, shit. God. Yeah. Mary is going to tear away at her own skin as it appears she has been compromised. Son of a bitch. And she is going to launch herself at Diablo. All right. Uh, I was thinking of um, what? No, no, no witty comment from Diablo about her throwing herself at you. It's not my turn. Oh, fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> she is gonna go to here, and she's gonna make uh, with her arm spikes. She's gonna make two attacks. Actually, no. Uh -oh. She's just gonna make the one. Uh, she instead of taking her two attacks, she's gonna take her use her um, embrace action to try to give a big old hug to Diablo. Twenty three to hit. That hits. All right. Let me get the dice for this. Never get to like an NPC, people. Like, just don't. Because they, do they like, mean? the second the second they find out you like an NPC, they're That's either going to die or they're going to try to kill you. That's not true. She seemed so nice. 24 oh. points of piercing damage. Oh. Diablo is going to use deflect attacks. Okay. Hope this helps as a reaction. So I get to roll d10 plus my dexterity and monk level. So d10 plus four. And you're now considered grappled, by the way. So, how much damage was that again? Uh, 24. 24 minus 7. It's a nice, uh, what? 17? 17? 17 That's points. right. Yep. All right, cool. That hurt quite a bit. All right. And, and it's now Cram's turn. Uh, okie dokie, I'm gonna. 15 feet to get up, 5, 10, 15, stand here, I'm then going to um, bonus action, second level healing word on Diablo, so that is 4d4 plus 4, 4d4, um, so that will be 16 healthy hit points to you. Oh, thank you very much. That's okay. Um, and then... Uh, I've cast a leveled spell, so I have to do a cantrip for my main action. We shall do... On this little fella... A... Uh, we'll do a firebolt on this little fella. A firebolt? One ma yes, so that'll be a 15... To hit on the one just map. Hits, just hits Mary. Uh, for seven fiery damage. All right. Uh, Mary will use her reaction to do tightening embrace. So any creature that is grappled by this creature, uh, when upon taking damage, can do 4d8 psychic damage to a creature that is grappling. Diablo oh. will take 10 points of psychic damage. 
Oh wow, that's crazy. All right. Um. Blah, 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 as a bonus action, which I've already done, so I can't do that. Can't do that. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, no, that's me. All right. It is now Valerie's turn. Valerie wakes up, uh, flings off her night mask, uh, flicks off the cucumbers uh, underneath, uh, walks towards the door using half her movement to get up and does not have enough movement to proceed any further. <laughs> so, see y'all next turn. Can you not actually use your action to dash? Yeah, but then I'll be outside and it'll but... see me. What? <laughs> Oh God! Uh, for what? Uh, you know what? Okay, okay, okay. She has her action to dash. Y'all peer pressuring me. Yeah. Uh... Uh, and she's gonna do a second level healing word at Diablo Dorado because you know he needs to live today. So forty four plus four, so that's seven. 14, 18 healing. 18? Enjoy your 18 hit points. 18. Thank you very eight. much. All right. So there. That is my action economy. Thank you. All right. It is. I need a death scene there from Renata's. Baron Daka is on deck. All right. Thank you so much. And Daka, it is now your turn. Oh, you, so you know I have advantage on that, so that's why I rolled it twice. Okay. Shame it was both natural ones. Unfortunately. Perfect. Um, the I'm gonna there. like kind of wake up like, what? What happened? <laughs> Oh, are we fighting? So I'll just roll out of bed, That's look out of the hall. Mask. <laughs> sleeping mask. That's actually oh, Valerie's, also a, a, Valerie's also in a shawl because you know that. Yeah, yeah. I'm like uh, ah, frostbite. <laughs> so. Great. I'll cast it on the blue one. Okay. Uh, here we go. So that's a con DC 15. Nine. Well, that's Three cold damage on top of uh, disadvantage on the next attack roll it makes. Okay. And what? Getting up, moving out, moving out, moving back. Hiding under the bed. Okay. Here it is. Diablo, it is your turn. All right. Um, yeah. Uh, Diablo is going to attempt to escape the grapple. Okay. So, uh, what's... Do you have to tell me the DC or do you know the DC? The DC is stated in its ability, so this is where I'm a little confused. That's, uh, yeah, that's weird. That's what happens, old stat blocks, right? Um, yeah, but he will do an athletics check here. Okay. 1DF. That's a 17. That will succeed. All right. 
so that Diablo. He breaks uh, breaks free, and he is going to. He can use his bonus action just to make a single uh, martial arts attack. Okay. No, no mojo on it this time. That's a natural twenty. Ah! Woo, woo, woo. So woo, we just woo, double woo. the die roll. You said. Uh, it is how the uh, rules is written. Is for natural twenties. So the double the die roll and add the modifier, or mm -hmm. is that how that's written? Okay. Yeah. So that is a what? Ten points of uh, bludgeoning damage here. Ten points of bludgeoning damage. All right. As Yellow breaks free from the grapple, he uh, launches an attack at this creature. Anything else for your turn? Uh, that'll be all I can do. It is now Ornar's turn. Ornar? Um, Ornar is going to cast Hold Person on this red one in front of him. Uh, can I get a wisdom saving throw of... 14 is the silver bobby. About that. It's is not it a, a person? That's not a person. But let me make or sure the whole person did not get an update. It, it just says choose a humanoid which you see within range. I don't know if it's oh, not a humanoid. That's really? Okay. Hmm. Um, I mean, can I choose to do something else or? I will allow you to do that, yeah. Thank you. Uh, in that case. I will cast... Oh, Renatus, you deserve it. We'll do a, a healing word on Renatus. Um, yeah. For... Six healthy hit points. Woo! Uh, no, it should be. Um, six plus... Uh, wisdom, so it'll be plus four. So it'll be plus four on top of that. So ten. Eight. Um, and then I'll just hit with the warhammer on the red one for a uh, ten. 10 does not hit. Then that'll be all. Alright. It is now their turn. Um it is going to attack Ornar. Oh, no. Uh with his well actually to start his turn, I need um Ornar to make a wisdom saving though, please. Okay. As he is within five feet of this creature. Uh, 22. 22 will succeed. You take nothing. Uh, it's his oh. harpoon arm against you, Ornar. Uh, that is going okay. to be a 23 to hit. Yes. I know. Uh, you are now grappled. Okay. 14 points of piercing damage. Ouchie. And now it's going to use a sorrowful embrace. I need another wisdom saving throw from Ornar, please. Okie dokie. Wisdom. Uh, 13. 13 will fail. You will take uh, oh, yeah. 48 psychic damage, totaling a uh, total of 16 points of psychic damage. Or oh, no, I'm down. Oh, oh no, no, everyone's dead in that room. Down. Uh, no, uh, Renatus is back up. He got some healing. Yeah. Oh, right. He just still had the icon on, on his token. Not bad. As he pulls you in and the flood of anxiety fills your mind of loneliness and isolation, you hear the words, the architect will be so happy that I'm delivering your corpses to him. All right. It is now previously Great. known as Mary's turn. Um, and she's going to use her two arm spike attacks against Diablo. 
Actually, no. She's going to move over here and use one arm strike, spike attack against Diablo to start. Uh, Diablo, that will be a 25 to hit. 25 hits. All right. Not as much damage as the other ability did, but that is going to be 19. Actually, I rolled almost max damage on that. 22 points of piercing damage. Yep. 2d10 plus 3. Uh, and then she'll use her other arm spike attack against Cram. Okay. Cram does a 16 hit. Uh, meets it, beats it, so yeah. All right. 21 points of piercing damage. Uh, like, no. Are you dead? No. Dead. Close. <laughs> Any other damage? That, this... uh, that is the end of that creature's turn. Awesome source. Cram, it is now your turn. Oh, lovely. It's going to get some real hurt for that. Let's believe it. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to bonus action innate sorcery to uh, increase my spell spell save DC by one for a whole minute. Yeah, take that lady. Does she die? No, I'm joking. Obviously not. Um, and then she's gonna. I'm going to do uh, Burning Hands. No, we're, no, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. Ignore that. That was a lie. I'm going to do uh, Tasha's Caustic Brew. So, pretty please, can I get a dex of 15, uh, 16? Six. Awesome. She's going to take 2d4 poisonous damage. Six. And... Uh, blah, 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 blah. The creature is covered in acid until the creature uses an action to scrape or wash the acid off. It takes 2d4 damage at the start of its turn until it does this. Okay. Uh, bonus action, action, movement, but I'll die. So that'll be all. Okay. Valerie, it is your turn. Hey, oh wow, two of her friends are looking very dire there, huh? That's that's great. That's great. Uh gosh golly gee willikers, man. Uh so gonna do another healing word at a Diablo. Because I mean he has to survive this, I'm sorry. He's he's the main character, you guys are just the the NPCs here. Everybody's the main character. Uh, so the first two is an eight, an 11. So that's 15 healing total, because I did that second level. Thank you very much. Uh, how does this horrible monstrosity that was once a potentially dear friend uh, look right now? Does she look bloodied? Standing strong. Standing strong? Mm -hmm. why, why you hurt me like this, man? I can hurt Why you, you hurt more. Me like this. In fact, uh, I found. Yeah. Don't do it. We're dear friends. Uh, and yeah, so uh, uh, Valerie, she doesn't know this is Murray. She just knows it's a monster, right? Like it's not visibly Murray. Correct. It tore, it tore the form of Mary off of itself. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, just gonna lay out a bunch of uh, vicious uh, attacks uh, uh, towards it, uh, just verbally uh, ripping into pieces, uh, talking about its loose skin and unfortunate, uh, unfortunate posture and how crooked its harpoon arms look, and <laughs> just like, just like as you walk out looking like that, your your arms are all crooked, your face, I mean, you look like your skin's hanging off. Have you even considered skin cream? You're ugly, you're disgusting, you should be embarrassed, you should go back to bed. Uh, and vicious mockery. 
I'm gonna ah, mean so. that one to death. <laughs> like... Yeah. Uh, so that's the damage. Uh, so it has to give me a, a wisdom saving throw. A wisdom saving throw. Yeah. So that would be. Why... That's that's not very good. No, that is a, that is a seven. So it takes fourteen psychic damage. Fourteen. Points. Is that is that right? I don't think that's right. Uh, no, I don't know. I did that. Uh, no, it Three just takes. Pieces. Uh, no, it's adding it in there, so it's actually one d six plus. It's just taking four psychic damage. Sorry. Four. I was about to say. It's. No, uh, I just. I need to quickly turn my psychic blades off because I cannot viciously lash you with my psychic blades. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and so Valerie's gonna just kind of. Uh, uh, are these rooms unlocked? You can, you, I, I mean, you wouldn't know until you try. Yeah, it's just gonna walk up to this door and push the door open. It opens. And kind of gonna duck in here around the corner. Upon opening the door, there is a foul stench in the air, and you see the corpse of Mary under the bed. Bastard. You've done both of the things. I did both you killed things. her you killed a beloved NPC and had a version of her kill us and so she has like a, a shrill cry of anguish from Valerie that's my turn all right it is now Renatus' turn Doc is on deck cool yeah, was in the right. uh, uh, let's see here first things first uh, bonus action second win so that way give myself a little little more breathing room cool that was not good wait why is that only a two it should actually be five anyway so that'll up my health a little cool update that and then going to Get right here next to this monster here. And I'm going to cast Booming Blade. And then I'm going to attack. 16. 16 just hits. Ooh, cool. So that's going to be 11 points of damage. Uh, you know what? Let's, let's make it. Let's put a little spice on it. Make that radiant damage. Oh. Okay. They put sneak attack on that too? No. Nah. Not not this campaign. Uh, And then my echo will also attack. Ah, it's a nine. Nine will miss. Okay. So where was I just now? Right here. Yeah, ten feet. And then I'll I'll take the opportunity and then I'll back away. Alright, we'll take the opportunity to attack against you. This lovely harpoon arm. Uh eighteen to hit. Just hits. Down man. There, put myself there. 21 points of piercing damage. Uh, Renatus is down again. Renatus he goes falls down. Mid, like a mid stride. He runs away, but just as a spike goes up through his torso and sticks out his front. Doesn't take any before he falls, he breaks his nose. <laughs> Doc, it is your turn. Mute helps. Um, yeah, I'll just just uh, grab my staff with the with the bigger uh, red gem on it, like like and just like scorching ray, and yeah, shoot at the blue one. So that's three attacks. So let's go. Uh, one, two, three. 
three. Wow. Anything hit? The second one only hit, right? The second one is the only one that hits, correct. Uh, that's six fire damage. Six points of fire damage. All right. And I will knock over this table here and okay. hide behind it. Sounds good. Did you take the lantern off first? The lantern should be out because we slept. I don't sleep with light. That's why you had your, your night mask on. I mean, you've got you've got Diablo, Orner on there and he's putting out constant turn. light. It's Diablo's turn, everybody. Yeah. Diablo. I'll just, I'll just I'll just do the hide action. Okay. All right, all right. At least that works. So Diablo is uh This thing isn't grappling anybody right now currently, is it? No. It didn't use okay. its uh embrace ability. All right. Diablo the one that's, will... Sorry, let me just clarify something real fast. The one that just brought down Renatus and Ornar, that is the one with the harpoon arms. This one has... It's different. So it, okay. it's not the one with the har the harpoon arms. It's not the one that can launch its arm like a... Like a like the Death Slinger in Dead by Daylight, basically, is what I'm imagining here. Um, but go yeah, ahead. I can see that they both fell in there, though, considering the door is open, right? Yeah. All right. That's... Uh... I guess Yellow will point that out out loud, but um, besides that, he will uh, he'll just start laying into this thing. Okay. So uh, here we go. That's a twenty-five to hit. Twenty-five will hit for nine points of bludgeoning damage. All right. And Diablo will use a point of his mojo to make two more attacks. So that's an eight to hit. Misses. That's unfortunate. And a 25 again. 25 hits. For six points of bludgeoning damage. All right. All right. And, uh, yeah, that'll... That'll be it. All right. I need a death saving throw from Ornar, please. Ornar. I was just noticing while you do this that uh, Renatus in grayed out in the interface looks the same because he's mostly black and white anyways. I thought, Did you I, see I, that? I thought the same thing. <laughs> Did you get that, Michael? I got it. Um, cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, okay. It is now the, this one's turn. It is going to. Mm, 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 mm. Uh oh. Mm. Uh oh. Mm. Oh. Oh. Gee. Diablo. Yep. Yeah. Uh, four thunder damage, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, 22 to hit. That does hit, yes. Oh, wait. Nope. Never mind. For ignore that. It's not going to make a difference. Yeah. Um, 15 points of piercing damage. 15 points of piercing damage. You're yeah, once that, again that. grappled. All right. Um, I need a wisdom saving throw. Okay. Uh, just one moment. That's a 16. You will take nine points of psychic damage. That's, That's enough to knock him down. <laughs> All right. It is now this one's turn. 
Yeah, and it has to take 2d4 acid damage, poison damage. Acid oh, damage? Acid, acid damage. Acid. Said acid. Five. Five. Yeah, he's dead, all right? All right. No, but it is bloodied now. No, he's dead. It's bloodied now? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's going so to <laughs> it's, it's going to uh, attack you with arm spikes that is going to be a 16 to hit oh beats it beats it man you still have the, the mage armor just a reminder yeah. and it's 16 with mage armor lovely uh, 15 13 plus my braces plus my plus one yeah I'm down come on What'd you get on your stealth check there, Daka? Uh, I made it with the 16. I'm invisible. It's going to step into this room. You hear it's breathing. Come out, come out, wherever you are, little one. We just want to talk. Cram, I need a death save, please. Okie dokie. Thank you so much. Oh, never mind. I'm dumb. Mm -hmm. It actually does take that thunder damage. I, I applied it my regardless. Okay. Appreciate it. Please all the help we can get. <laughs> Valerie, it is now your turn. This sounds bad, right? <laughs> you, you hear like pretty much fall. everybody's down uh so mary's shoved under the bed right okay yes how bad of a person do we feel like being tonight gillian this is oh, the question no. what are uh, we running <laughs> <laughs> there's nowhere to go uh, so Valerie is going to uh, throw off her shawl and disguise self herself to look like one of these creatures, but only with two arms. Okay. Mm hmm. Um, actually, no. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, and the kind of walking out here and like kind of peering out, looking at it. And what does what does it does it rec does it acknowledge as she moves out? Make a deception check with advantage. Yeah. Uh, it's a twenty-one. Okay. So she's got this like horrific twisted shape. It looks at you. Does not react. Yeah. Yeah. Walks up to uh, to cram and kind of like thrusts thrusts her f foot at the the broken wooden body. Is Are that there two destinies? Any of these left? Right, and the voice is very similar to the voice she's been hearing. Are they? Are there any victims? Any of these left to bring back? All right, is that your turn? Uh, yes, for now. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah. All right. I need a death save from Renatus, please. All right, thank you. Daka, it's your turn. What? Pro 20, what are you doing? <sighs> At the reload. Um. Ah, oh, this is a hard decision. Oh, 
Okay. Um, how do I interpret the I just want to talk? Is it like, is it a taunt or is it actually Make an inside check? <laughs> wow. Sure, it's fine. I'm not good with insight. <laughs> um, I mean, they might be telling the truth. It's kind of hard to read. Honestly, that really plays with how Daka acts because he doesn't always like read social cues. So it's kind of perfect. <laughs> Maybe they're friendly. <laughs> OK, I will. Uh use I'm gonna I'm gonna gonna move disengage dodge and I can make it to here and just passing by a yeah talk whatever you want to say stop attacking us okay Anything else return? Uh, that's uh, that's pretty much like movement, disengaging, right. and Any dodging. From that's Diablo, that's and a from all Walmart. I can do. Uh, 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 uh. Trust. <laughs> I don't have healing spells. Like it's even when I would it, I couldn't. <laughs> Asmir did a bag of holding in a very similar scene like this. With a bag of holding, he basically set off a nuke. <laughs> I don't even have a nuke. <laughs> so stressful. Thank you so much for those dust saves. Appreciate it. Running this this one is immediately going to uh, launch his hook arm at you and start to reel you in with it. Uh, twenty two. Mm hmm. Uh, that's a DACA, by the way. I know. Um. <laughs> Wait, is that with disadvantage? It gets advantage when it has with um when it's within. 30 feet of at least two other creatures. Oh, crap. So it's a straight roll. Correct. And it still has a 22. Correct. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't worry about it. These things are real. Kill me. 19 points of piercing damage. Oh, yeah. Great. I need a wisdom um. save, please. Well, I will let you know that no matter what you're on your wisdom save, you will go down. Because it will be yeah, more than so. three. Or more than, yeah. All right, Valerie, you watched as each one of your allies has gone down. Mm -hmm. And as you're staring at these two creatures in this disguise, Mm -hmm. You feel a sharp pain from behind, and then you look down to see this blade, not a spike arm, but a blade sticking out from your chest. You let out a gas of air. Mm -hmm. And you fall to the ground, blood trickling out of your mouth, your life essence spilling out onto the wooden floor, and you hear a voice from behind you. You may take their bodies to the laboratory and let's see what kind of golems I can make with them. Valerie bleeding out on the floor, coughing up blood as she does so, 
looking around. Her vision starts to fade. And what happens next is a story for another time. Oh shit. So everybody, that's where we're going to end tonight's session of Prestige Encounters as uh, the party is suffering a tragic fate uh, at the hands of what was a tavern, almost their first home. Um, we'll see you next week at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here at twitch.tv slash souls. I'm your Dungeon Master Michael, and I'm going to go ahead and pass it on over to Jeremiah, who's playing Diablo, our tiefling monk yeah uh this is a uh quite the pickle we've gotten ourselves into uh weird deformed monsters uh attacking us in our sleep i've seen this somewhere but um <laughs> but yeah it, it's uh the the ball sequence was very fun it was uh it was great seeing our first uh what em our emissaries from the Sangizian Empire? Some pretty interesting characters hearing stuff, something whispers about a plague and whatnot. But uh, who knows if that e that's even going to matter for our characters? But uh, we'll see what what this whole you know shebang lands them in next session. Uh, and I can't wait personally. Uh, and with that, I'll pass it over to uh, Quentin, aka Renatus. Hey, that's me. Uh, yeah. Oh, boy. How are we going to get out of this, Pickle Gang? Uh, yeah. Great session. Uh, yeah. Like you said, the, the ball sequence was really, really cool. Um, yeah. Good bit of RPing there. A lot of, a lot of death. A lot of death saving throws. Not, not as much fighting as I would have liked, but, uh, yeah. Well, that's what happens when you get knocked down twice. But, anyway. Uh, yeah. So, as always, thank you to everyone who is chatting it up in chat tonight. Thank you to all of our wonderful role players for bringing this story to life. And speaking of bringing stories to life, thank you to our wonderful DM, Michael, for putting this story together for us to have the opportunity to bring to life each and every week here. So, um, yeah, with that, I'll pass it over to Guy, who's playing Valerie. Yeah, that was an interesting end of there, but, uh, you know. At the very least, she got to be the last one alive. So, you know, in the end, she still wins. <laughs> Thank you so much for this uh, wonderful TPK you've given us, uh, Dungeon Master. Oh, it's a uh, Happy to help. Honestly, uh, for the kind of character that I built, that ball sequence is like, uh, <laughs> like exactly the kind of th moment I was waiting for. Um, so it's kind of fun to to play the non-martial aspects of uh, of this character. I always like doing those little things while y'all are, you know, mingling. So that was really neat. Um, got to learn a little bit of uh, intrigue that will potentially die with us. I guess we will not find out until next week. Uh, but yeah, lovely playing with everyone uh, as always. And I'm going to pass it on to, oh my gosh, who is it next? Killian! Who's that Pokemon? It's Killian who plays the second last to die. It's Pikachu! It's Killian! <laughs> <laughs> Killian Mon! Only because I'm green and small. <laughs> yeah. I'd be a... I don't know, plant type. Um... Yeah, no, um... Definitely had some fun there. Uh, great roleplay. Um, nice ballroom stuff. Um, got some, got some high society, um, Valerie things. That was cool. And, um, TPK. Yeah, uh, let's see how we get out of that one. Josh, your turn. I mean, I think I'm going to go for, like, a paladin next, you know, high AC, high damage. Hi. Really fuck up these these creatures, you know? No, no, all I'm joking. Um, We're gonna play six paladins, yeah. <laughs> all with like plus three uh, magical plate armor. Yeah, uh, and like I'm actually, uh, uh, legendary weapons. I'm actually playing a peace cleric next. Mm. That's a good, mm. that's a good choice. Yeah. But no, uh, I'm sure uh, the gang will all be fine. We'll just be like hideous, you know? Like Valerie will have some of Diablo's horns. 
Becca's ears are going to be on cram. You know, Ornar's going to have, like, Renatus's I I don't know, feet. I don't know. You know, don't you dare be... touch my ears. <laughs> <laughs> we're all going to be gross and hideous, but, um, yeah, really fun battle. Um, I don't know if it was rigged, you know, or if we just suck at the game. But, yeah. <laughs> We, we got one of them close. Very uh, true. Yeah, but no, you you that... did do a lot of damage to both of them. They were both below mm -hmm. half health. Mm, but I think this mystery figure would have just... sliced mm. to death anyway, so... Uh, with that, though, I will pass it back on to Mr. TPK uh, himself. Yes! TPK uh, Michael. Thank you so much, everybody, for attending tonight's session. I can't wait to see you next week for our next session of Prestige Encounters. Here at twitch.tv slash lipsouls. Or if you're just now uh, tuning in from, you know, the podcast network, our videos on demand, we'll see you live here uh, if you decide to tune in. Otherwise, you can catch our videos or the pre recorded sessions of our uh, stream the following Monday from when they take place. So we love to have it. It's always a good time. And of course, the story does go on. We'll see you next week. Until then, bye. 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 Und gute Nacht.